Disclaimer! Crossing the Line is not a show intended to bully or harass anyone. Do not go out of your way to find or mess with the authors featured on our podcast. They make what we do possible. And we love them. And you. Thanks. Joy. Welcome to Crossing the Line, a fanfiction podcast where we read, review, and critique fanfiction for your listening pleasure. Hallelujah, it's the 50th episode of our show. We're having a big party popping celebration over here. We got titties out, we got action figures, we got soda pop, we got uh, juice, we got ruffles, we got uh, the rest of all of our favorite stories. That too! For our special anniversary episode, we're going to be trying to finish some of our favorite stories that we were unfortunately left hanging in the past. I've been waiting to do this for a long time, personally. Me too. So now, before we jump right into things, we've been doing this show for two years now. What are you guys, how have you guys been hanging in there since the beginning? Those long years ago. Uh, consistently laughing really hard and finding new content all the time. It's great. As someone who really enjoys finding obscure internet content, there's always new things to discover when doing this. And internet, well, fanfiction.net's been around since the early 2000s. So we've had like two decades worth of content now, and it just keeps growing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's all, like it's crazy to me. I, before we started the show, I didn't even know fanfiction was like still a thing and there are tons and tons of people that still actively use it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, a lot of times we get stories from the last few years, even if it's subjects from the 2000s or whatever. I'm pretty sure there was an episode where I read a story that came out, like, within the week of recording. Yeah. And occasionally we find people that write these and they get mm-hmm. back to us, which is cool. Mm-hmm. We've had one on our show. Yeah, we Jess had Sagan. A, Jess Sagan, one of, our, one of our favorites, who writes some of the most wild and ridiculous stories <laughs> i think his newest one finished he had like a totally spies at a netty crossover mm. i think he finished that one Ooh, that one and the lapis mm. one yeah that beach lapis drawing that blue breed did that blew up was actually based on one of his stories it's true with uh george bush and dick cheney checking out her assets at the beach at the beach <laughs> eating ice cream <laughs> wearing shorts with this 50th episode i'd also like to say that uh, it's a common misconception that fan fiction is only sexual. There's a lot of just like interesting or just like all genres really make it in here. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot for everyone. It doesn't have to be uh, sexually charged. Oh yeah, totally. I hope that a lot of you are watching this 50th episode for uh, and be fairly new listeners. We're getting this up on streaming hopefully soon. And uh, hope that you come in with open expectations because even just the stories today are pretty broad. It's true. And don't worry about feeling like you're out of the loop or something. We're all going to do a, we're going to try our best to um, uh, give like a summary of the stories we have, we read in the past. And if you really want to get like the whole experience, we will we'll be uh, telling you like the episode name, we'll link that stuff down below so you can get there, easy access and laugh on with the rest of us. And should you be finding this on a streaming service, all of our original content is on YouTube. We had it up on SoundCloud intermittently, but SoundCloud, you have to pay for so much st- like storage, and even then, it's not really enough. So, Just because all of our episodes are like over an hour long, mm-hmm. that quickly became, like now, 50 plus hours, which they just don't have the storage space for. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so basically, for like... T- <laughs> SoundCloud was just kind of like a rough one because you you're it's already not like a podcast platform. It's made for normal music, so I don't think it's really the most lucrative way to do a podcast. But um we've got we've been working on some stuff. Our tech master Eli has been doing his best to get some streaming things going so we can have full streaming service, use your podcast app, all that good stuff. Yeah, I'm trying to do a free version of a website to get an RSS feed going for Spotify. Um, the tools I have, I'm on a second website now, second attempt to build, have just been really asinine for trying to... Spotify, until this year, or until like the last year or so, has never really been uh, podcast friendly. You kind of had to upload it as music mm-hmm. before and do workarounds. Mm-hmm. Now it's it's sort of getting better, but there's still a lot of like really specific requirements that I'm trying to hit on my own. So Yeah, they've been very recently getting into like the podcasting game. Um a lot of other bigger shows are doing like Spotify exclusive podcasts, which I don't know how that'll work. If it'll still show up in 
uh, like podcast app feeds and whatnot. But yeah, it's a mm-hmm. interesting idea. It's honestly surprising it took them so long to get there to do like a podcasting section of their site. But yeah, I've always listened to podcasts on Spotify, preferably just because it's like. Obviously, you can't lock your phone on YouTube unless you have YouTube Red. Nobody mm-hmm. pays for that, so... <laughs> nobody. <laughs> nobody does it. No. Yeah, I remember I used to take, like... Whenever I take, like, longer road trips, I'd listen to podcasts. I still do, but uh, I didn't have any podcasting apps on my phone, so I would just have them on YouTube and just, like, have my phone flipped over, so... Like, the bright phone screen wasn't shining as I drove down the highway in front of all the cops in Florida. But, uh... Yeah, it was pretty rough stuff. Like, if your car bumped and, like, flipped over, and then suddenly your your whole thing's, like, like your phone flips from vertical to horizontal, and it, like, staggers the video, and then it's just, oh, no. it's all kinds of a mess. Uh, and also, it's a video, which takes a, which is a lot harder for your phone to be, like, to actively get the service as you're driving down a highway 60 miles an hour. Yeah, podcasting has come a long way in the last three years we've been doing this, mm-hmm. and, uh, so is our recording. Now we're all recording in the same room again. When we started, we were in different areas. We were also trying to record in three different mics, which was kind of a pain. But uh, shoe ball over here was six hours away, and we still made it work somehow. That's true. It's true. Yeah. Oh my God! That episode we had Sir Palo on. We had to edit <laughs> because he recorded our audio too and sent it to us. So we had to like edit out ourselves talking on one feed as we were talking to him. It was like. I'm pretty sure we've said this every time Sir Sir Palo has been mentioned about the podcast. Yeah. Just because it was so excruciating to edit. I'll have to berate him about that later. (laughs) Do it. Berate him right now. Also, when we started recording this, I don't think... How many followers did you have, Stephen, compared to what you have now? Yeah, you were only at like 10, 20,000. I don't know. Yeah, let's see here. When we started the podcast, I think that was right around the part where I started uploading to Twitter more consistently. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, you were still like a Tumblr, right? Yeah, I was like at 12. Mm-hmm. Yeah, somewhere in that range. Now you're at 72. 72.6. Oh, six. Yeah. Wow. Lee did a drawing that blew up. Oh, my God. But you're bigger than her. Uh, not by a hell of a lot, honestly. But you're bigger than her. <laughs> you're a man. Size doesn't matter, it's what you do with it. George, what have you done artistically in the last few... Oh, we should introduce ourselves. We forgot to do that last time. <laughs> Holy crap. Okay, so I don't have much of an online presence. I'm uh, Virgil Vlogs, Vanity Kicks, Busy Barista. I do a lot of uh, tech work for different people on social media and stuff, but I don't have much of a presence on my own. Uh, George is G Pool. I am G Pool. I draw on occasion. I mostly go to work and go to school and go to bed. Uh, it's a hard life out there being a young man with so much to look forward to. And the... I'll cut this out, maybe. Uh, it's a hard life out there being a young man in this world, just trying to get along and live your life and follow your passions when so many things get in the way. We're trying out here, ladies and gentlemen. We're trying. Stephen, what are you? Hi, uh, guys. My name is Stephen. I'm known as Blue Breed Online. I like to draw hentai for a living, and uh, I like to also incorporate. I like to incorporate comedy into my work, and occasionally I will be called Gringo by Senor Palo. Yeah, this guy knows Senor Palo. That's our claim to fame for the rest of our lives. <laughs> <laughs> One day I'll, it's okay, one day I'll contact uh, tw- uh, Critical via DM and he'll ignore me. We should have more people on the show. You should mm. contact Hugbees, it'd probably be easier. Hugbees? That's Andrew from the official podcast. Oh, true. And he's also more open on the hentai scene. Mm. So you could make him yuck it up and then we'll be famous forever. <laughs> Because Andrew Hugbees said, this guy is pretty epic. <laughs> this is an interesting space to have guests on because it's uh, very vulnerable. I feel like you know, yeah. you've got to be willing to find and read fan fiction. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not like True. a shoot the shit podcast where that's so easy to do. Where you try to have like an actual like itinerary of sorts. You have to find people that are interested in weird internet content. Which mm-hmm. is, I mean, there's spaces for that. I feel like the whole official podcast would be into that. Yeah, I've kind, of, I've kind of thought about it a little bit. I was thinking maybe for some guest episodes, we could just provide a fan fiction for them to read. 
Yeah, that's true. I guess it would all depend on whoever they are, what they want to do. Because okay. maybe they'll want to find one or they want to they want to read one blindly like us. Mm. Or they could sit in as we've had people do before. Mm-hmm. True. Yeah, that's right. Didn't Palo just kind of sit in and laugh along? Yeah, but he can't read English, so what do you expect? <sighs> I, we've also mentioned guests before that we've wanted to have on, but they can't, like, English isn't their first language. Because the artist's space is very varied. Mm-hmm. When you mm-hmm. when you draw a big titty but you don't speak English, that's a bad luck Brian meme. Put it on the screen. <laughs> I'm not making that. <laughs> me, future me, fuck you. <laughs> Have fun. It's a Bitch. problem for future me. <laughs> future ba- bad luck George meme. <laughs> bad luck George. <laughs> anyway, oh, we have a show to do. Meh, gentlemen and gentlemen. Okay, George, you said you wanted to go first. I what, did. Where's yours from? Recap, etc. My story is from Crossing the Line, episode forty-two. That was our panty and stocking special, and yeah. uh, I read this delightful little story about Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh no! Hell yeah! In Santa Monica with panty, stocking, anarchy. This and, one is uh, very good. And <laughs> Daffy is. Duck. And we only got about halfway through, but the last episode was such a treat with it. And I've been waiting so so eagerly to read more of this. Um, so basically, Sonic the Hedgehog, coolest guy alive, is the manager of a Foot Locker. <laughs> he... What's wrong? <laughs> That's... I, mean, I just, I mean, it's fitting. He goes through a lot of shoes, I'm sure. That's he sad. has a summer house in Santa Monica that he rents out with Daffy Duck and Panty and Stocking, who also are managers of separate Foot Lockers. They have enough Foot Locker money that they can afford, like, summer houses that they can go to whenever they want. Mm. Which you shouldn't even call it a summer house then, but that's beside the point. So they go there. There's a lot of tension. Um, There is a thrilling scene where Daffy Duck is watching porn in Stocking's room because she has, like, a DVD player and he doesn't. And she almost cuts his curly Q duck wiener off with her sword. Panty laughs. They make scrambled eggs, I think. Um, and I believe the last thing that happened was uh, in Santa Monica. They were trying to, oh yeah, they were going. They're going to find Rita Repulsa, who works in a White Castle near the edge of Santa Monica. <laughs> yeah, so I'll live a little bit of the last paragraph. Uh, um, uh, which Bandera Sama, her American name is Repita Repulsa, you know, from the original Power Rangers, and you'll never guess where she also works. She works part time in a white castle near the edge of Santa Monica. We went there next to not only give her a piece of our minds, but to get some white castle for breakfast since we all worked up an appetite <laughs> discovering Daffy's fetish. I would say that hopefully things would get better fast, but I probably already tempted Lady Karma. So we'll just see what happens next. That's being read from Sonic's perspective, by the way. Mm-hmm. He is our protagonist, usually, for these things. Uh, so that's basically it. It's a story about nothing but a lot of laughs and a lot of fighting and a lot of dick jokes. That being said, I am very eager to dig into the back half of the story. So I will do that right now. And we're immediately introduced to a new character. Hell yeah. <laughs> oh no, wait, no, we've seen we've seen her before. She was aptly mentioned in the beginning of the this story. By the way, Joy from Inside Out, <laughs> who's the mayor of the greatest city in the world, Buffalo. <laughs> in case you forgot. <laughs> but yeah, we made all those jokes about going to visit Buffalo and you said what could there possibly be in Buffalo? <laughs> Yeah, I remember Google mapping or Google Earthing it, and there was, like, nothing worthwhile. There was, like, a tree, like, an oldest tree in the country or something. A McDonald's, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go. Joy's point of view, setting, White Castle, Santa Monica, California, 8 a.m. How did she get here at 8 a.m.? Take a guess. Early riser. She's, a ma- she's a mayor. She has political power. Joy from inside out. Mm-hmm. 
I'm still wrapping my head around this tiny ass little organism being the mayor of Buffalo. Buffalo's so far away from Santa Monica. Well, she's got to go visit visit her roommate Sonic, I guess. She's probably like in Sonic's conscience. The mayor has a roommate. Yeah, remember Sonic and Joy were mates. Were roommates in Buffalo, and then which is where Sonic works at his Footlocker. Who do you think makes? Who do you think makes more money? Sonic. He has a summer home. That's That's true. True. She has depression. Despite her character. <laughs> anyway. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever looked at, looked at someone and thought, what is going on inside of their head? Well, I know what's going on inside of Shadow the Hedgehog's head. At least, I think I do. Now, I'm no mind reader or anything, but I think that Shadow and I are becoming very good friends. Well, at least I think I do. <laughs> Again... I'm not a mind reader. Shadow and I have a very awkward history. Up to this point, and very recently, our bond has started to improve. It's not much of an improvement, but the sheer fact that it's starting to improve makes me smile widely. I'm Joy, and I'm the proud and active mayor of the greatest city in the world, Buffalo, New York. (laughs) This city has everything. The greatest people, the greatest jobs, the greatest, well, everything, really. Okay. I'm insanely proud to be serving this great city, to say the least. I currently live with two of the greatest friends I could ever have, one of which is my lovely and very amazing fiancé. Their names are Sonic the Hedgehog and Daffy Duck, also known as my lovely and very amazing fiancé. Whoa. Whoa. I'm not not happy that Daffy Duck is hitched to joy knowing what he's into. (laughs) (laughs) Knowing what he does in his summer home. She fits like a glove. Explain what his what his fetish was for the viewers at home. Oh, you know. Yeah, just uh, leave it to your imagination. <laughs> Daffy likes reptile dig. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, he was watching. <laughs> All right, that's right. Daffy Duck himself was giving himself a good old rub to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That's Unbelievable. Right. <laughs> <laughs> You think every Thursday night Joy has to put on her scaly outfit? Daffy's like, <laughs> I'm not. He has to put on. She has to put on a very heavy turtle shell. <laughs> <laughs> Big master Roshi here at the turtle shell. <laughs> I enjoy living with my boys, and it's a blast living with them. We always have so much fun together. What? Well, where, where's Shadow in this situation? You were talking about Shadow a second ago, and now you're going on about your... He's working at the White Castle. He's preparing her burger. I hope not. (laughs) I love this so much. Shadow on a fucking White Castle in an apron. Next to Rita Repulsa. With a tiny hat on top of his big hair. His his quills smelling of onion vapors. God. Okay, sorry. I enjoy living with my boys, and it's a blast living with them. We always have so much fun together. Well, most of the time. Sometimes they get at each other's throats for the most weirdest things. For example, there was this situation where Daffy and Sonic were arguing over the fact that Daffy was, quote-unquote, abusing his fuse to a very popular TV show. Now, I love my future husband with all my heart, when he's happy, I'm happy. And nothing makes me happier when Daffy is happy. But I find it odd that he, quote-unquote, gives himself a helping hand <laughs> to the TV show Everybody Loves Raymond. <laughs> Why is Daffy so feverishly horny? <laughs> Everybody Loves Raymond! Abusing his fuse. <laughs> When the brother comes in, he's like, oh, I love you, <laughs> I love you, Raymond. I love you, Daffy. I want to get all my Daffy dick. Uh, just like that. Fifth. Pick up all Daffy yells at his dick to get it harder. <laughs> now, I will admit that Ray Romano was very attractive, somewhat. I also loved him in the Ice Age series of movies. I just don't understand why Daffy is such a sensual attraction towards him. I don't mind if he has sexual interests other than females, and I always have more than happy to experiment with him should the situation arise. 
I just find it very weird, that's all. But above all else, I support my Daffy no matter what. Joe, are you sure that's a door you want to open? This is such an unnecessary exposition. Why is she at White Castle? <laughs> In Santa Monica. <laughs> this is what she's telling the cashier when she comes up to order. <laughs> this is what she's telling Shadow <laughs> over the counter. <laughs> she's just yelling at Shadow over the grill noise about this. <laughs> The ultimate life form has to make like 12 sliders. Meanwhile, he's just getting told about Daffy's kinks. She yeah. wants to chaos blast the cider. <laughs> she wants to order a 7x7, seven seven, so he has to, she has to take up the entire grill to make a 7 tall White Castle stack. So we're gonna get banned from White Castle. <laughs> if, if he wants to quote unquote butter the corn to Ray Romano, then he should just have at it. As long as he's happy, I'm happy. Butter the corn. That's wrong, I, Steven. This is great material. I have to remember that one. That's a new one on me. Use it in one of your cool doujinshis. I will. Make well, a doujinshi out of this. Yeah. Daffy Duck buttering his corn to Ray Romano. <laughs> So many layers, I love this. <laughs> Butter is corn. Uh, <laughs> uh, give himself a helping hand. <laughs> abusing his fuse. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot. This is the kicker. Every weekend, Sonic and Daffy go to Santa Monica, California to take some time to relax from what they go through on a daily basis. Every weekend, they go all the way across the country oh, no! to take some time to relax. Oh no! What? Sonic runs a Foot Locker store near downtown Buffalo, while Daffy runs an Olive Garden right next to Sonic's Foot Locker. Foot Locker store. Right next to Foot Locker? That would smell so bad! I fucking love this story so much. It's a. I think I was like a breadsticks. <laughs> They're both managers, but they only work during the week and then travel all the way across the country to get away from the old wife. Butter is corn, more like butter is fucking bread. Holy shit. <laughs> Daffy oh. Duck's a simple man. He runs the Olive Garden, he runs the Santa Monica, and he watches his Ray Romano and then he Imagine this oh. filthy, greasy, angry Olive Garden manager. <laughs> Just <laughs> sitting on a lazy boy slumped as far as you can slump with his dick out. If this same writer doesn't do a, a fucking restaurant, what is it? Hmm? Fucking Gordon Ramsay show. Oh, like a kitchen nightmare. A, ki- a kitchen nightmare on Daffy, Daffy Duck's Ducks Olive Salt Garden. Ducks. He goes to one chain, one chain of the Olive Garden kitchen nightmare. Holy shit. He's completely unaware of what Olive Garden is and doesn't realize it's a chain. He just thinks it's this guy's restaurant. He's completely unaware of Daffy Duck being the owner. <laughs> Of this cartoon duck. It's like four feet tall. You call me fucking kid, me. Got fucking duck running the restaurant. <laughs> Can't even cook a duck up back there. What did you say? I'll show you a duck. <laughs> I bet Daffy probably gets off the kitchen nightmares too. It's not normal enough. They both get a ton of business, and they are always exhausted every day they come home. The flow of people are non-stop for them every day. They get amazing business, mainly due to the large amount of tourists and Buffalonians visiting their current area. What tourist goes to Foot Locker in Olive Garden? <laughs> Buffalonians. The massive amount of buffalo tourism that goes just for Olive Garden and Foot Locker. Like, oh, I love this exotic cuisine and footwear. <laughs> you just can't get this anywhere but Buffalo. It's because they go there and they get the gout, so they immediately have to buy their footwear. <laughs> Overall, they are insanely hard workers who deserve millions of dollars for their hard work. I normally don't go with them every weekend, mainly because I'm too busy serving the great city of Buffalo, 
But recently, I've come to terms with the fact that my fellow team members think that I work too hard. Now, I digress. I could never work too hard for my fellow Buffalonians. There's no such th there's, there's so much work to get done, and as soon as hum humanly possible. I just don't have the time for breaks, you know. But everyone in the office just suggests that I should at least take off during the weekends. Can you believe that? Weekends are the most busy. With the most events happening, I can't just bail on everything. When the city and my coworkers need me the most, I would just be doing an overall disservice. Recently, I had a change of heart. I realized that if I wear myself out too much, I won't be able to do my work at my utmost best. Plus, I was forced by city council to take off during the weekends, since they were concerned about my overall health. I was healthy as a horse, and still am, but unfortunately, city council thought otherwise. So today, I am in Santa Monica, California, with one of my best friends in the whole world, Shadow the Hedgehog. We're currently eating at a White Castle to eat some delicious California sliders. This is my first time eating at White Castle, along with Shadow, so this should be very fun. I hate this woman who thinks that chain restaurants are legitimate food. <laughs> she travels all the way to California to go to White Castle. Not even like in and out or like something Californian White Castle. To get a famous White Castle California slider. <laughs> Joy and Shadow go to White Castle. <laughs> I'm here to hang with my best friend Shadow and by that I'm going to interrupt him at work and give him an hour long spiel about <laughs> my fucking fiance's kinks. She comes all the way to White Castle and befriends one of the servers at this specific California White Castle across I'm the country. I'm coming to visit you every weekend. My new best friend. She doesn't know Shadow at all. She just came in. She just talks to his back while he grumbles and keeps cooking. <laughs> 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 She's back. I didn't think she'd come all the way fucking from Buffalo. Not here. <laughs> Not here. Not at work. Santa Monica. <laughs> at the register. <laughs> Where's that damn fourth slider? <laughs> <laughs> Many of you may ask me, why is Shadow with me? Well... Sha recently Shadow had been in a very depressive state. His I form wonder why. <laughs> His former girlfriend, Sasuke Kiryuin, broke up with him because she thought he she was cheating on him with Claire Farron, aka Lightning, parentheses, known for staring in the Final Fantasy thirteen, and her girlfriend Aqua, who was well known for being in the Kingdom Hearts series of video games at the same time. Now, before I confuse you even further, let me give you a summary of Shadow's living arrangements. <laughs> <laughs> before I confuse you any further, let me go on this segue about how Shadow lives at home. We just got back to the center of the fucking story! No, no. You need to know this. It's imperative to the plot. Stockholm Syndrome ass! I can only imagine what he lives like. Oh, you're in for something. I bet he lives in a freaking slumlord apartment in California and works minimum wage at Weiss Castle. <laughs> <laughs> so he can scrounge up for one green emerald. He has his, tri he has his like tribal logo sticker on his front door. God. <laughs> there is a certain building right across from the house that I live in. There lies a detective agency known as Devil May Cry. This okay. building has three floors with different people living in each floor. On the first floor, Dante and his partners Trish and Lady reside. In the second floor, Shadow lives in an apartment with two roommates. One of them is my close friend, Disgust, who is mad at me for reasons I don't know about. The other is a very fashionable British lady named Ceriza. The majority call her by her name Bayonetta. But I like to call her Ceriza, as it's more personal and friendly to call her by her real name, in my opinion. Lightning and Aqua live right across from them, as they share an apartment together. Shadow hangs out with Lightning and Aqua slightly more than with Disgust and Bayonetta. Regardless, Satsuki realized this and felt very threatened by the fact. In my opinion, she was just misinformed. Just because Shadow is surrounded by close female friends who are more attractive than her doesn't not give her the incentive to break Shadow's heart. This is not okay in my book. 
and I can assure you of that. As for the third floor, I really don't know what lies within there. I couldn't really tell you, to be honest. Anyways. My, my omnipresence stops there. <laughs> I haven't thought of it yet. Anyways, I practically but happily begged Shadow to come with me on the weekends so he can get away from everything and spend some time with me. I know I was being a bit forceful, but if it means that Shadow will cope... I will be as forceful as I can. <laughs> Did they specify if Shadow lives in California or Buffalo? No, he lives in Buffalo. Okay. Of course he does. Mm-hmm. He's got yeah, a... so he does not work at the White Castle. He's gonna own that White <laughs> Castle branch one day. <laughs> He's gonna go there and say, Wow, I wish I'd managed one of these places. I wish I knew where Shadow worked. He took a bite of a White Castle burger and he thought of Maria. <laughs> he threw oh. it up. It's white. What? And so, and Just like her. And Sonic X. Maria! In Sonic X, whenever he's, Maria's brought up, he has like an actual, like, physical breakdown and, like, shuts off. So <laughs> I just imagine that. Satsuki. Yeah, it's like a bite of the burger and breaks down. <laughs> no, it's just, just the onion in the burger. <laughs> they put too much onion on this slider. <laughs> Damn. Not- not here. He's on his hands and knees and he's like picking the top bun up. And he's like, oh god! Onion and mustard. Oh. <laughs> Flicking it off, dirtying up his gloves. There's so much mustard. <laughs> White Castle with his gloves. He's <laughs> getting grease stains on him. I hate mustard. <laughs> he opens the bun and picks up the bun and sees his mustard. Like, Damn. Not here. <laughs> Damn, God, monster. Just can I please have a refund or a new burger? I do not like it. <laughs> he goes back to the White Castle. <laughs> he asked for a refund because there's mustard on his burger. <laughs> he never specified for it not to happen. Drives all the way back to California from Buffalo and asks for a refund. You didn't tell me there was mustard on this. I, you should know I don't like mustard. I want my six dollars. The thing I hate most about this travel to California every single weekend is that it takes like an entire day to get there mm-hmm. by plane. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so to get there and back, you would have no weekend time actually there. <laughs> I would just like to say. Sonic and Daffy make the most of it. Even as we start off in Santa Monica, eating White Castle together, it will be a step towards complete cope of his breakup. My job throughout the weekends is will be to help him through this, as positively as possible. As long as Shadow is happy, I'll be happy. He's still reeling over this breakup and he's your fiancé. I'm not so sure this is gonna go no, so well. Oh, Daffy's his her fiancé. Oh, okay. She just said the same line. Which okay, is I thought Shadow was his fiancé. No, no. Chapter 6, Joy's Point of View, Setting, White Castle, Santa Monica, California, 810. I should specify that the last chapter took 10 minutes of reminiscing. (laughs) Nothing's happened (laughs) in White Castle. I feel very optimistic today. It's a beautiful day outside. Is it good? Just the thought of eating a White Castle slider at 8 in the morning (laughs) and having onion breath all day. (laughs) You could not run your day faster. (laughs) Joy was so happy. She's going to be sad for the first time in her life. All day. Her yellow light just dims as she gets heartburn in the middle of the day. It's like, whoa! Ow! My acid reflux! Shadow can't cope like this. (laughs) Eating White Castle at 8.10 in the morning. I'm walking Duncan. Why do we never go to a breakfast restaurant in the morning? Why do we always eat savory meats? <laughs> Maria. <laughs> it's a beautiful day outside in Santa Monica, California, and my good friend Shadow and I are eating some delicious White Castle. Well, we are about to eat it. We just recently ordered about ten sliders, five for each of us, when we are waiting currently for them. Nice. I, I just have a good feeling that today is going to be an amazing day. <laughs> Only... Shadow doesn't feel the same way right now. 
He's still trying to cope with the fact that his ex-girlfriend, Satsuki Kirin, broke up with him about a week ago. <clears throat> oh. Is that you cosplaying Joy? No, no that's you cosplaying Satsuki. No, that was, uh, that's, she's like, she's saying that he's gonna have a great day or whatever, and he's like, he's upset for some reason, he's burping as his acid reflux kicks in. From he hasn't eaten slider. yet. He hasn't eaten his five sliders yet. <laughs> he got him out oh, of Oh, just you wait. <laughs> All because of the fact that he is surrounded by women more attractive than her. She keeps bringing that up. <laughs> that all the women around him are more attractive than her. <laughs> Can you believe that? The fact that she broke up with such an amazing person due to her own insecurities is just awful. I think Joy is just projecting about how beautiful she feels now. <laughs> Especially when Shadow is left to suffer afterwards. Honestly, unbelievable. And just plain terrible. So... My job today is to keep Shadow as happy as I possibly can. I have a ton of activities planned for today alone. However, before we get into the excitement, we first gotta fill our tummies with some delicious burger sliders. And no one does it better than White Castle. <laughs> Wait, do they do they also have a summer home in Santa Monica? How are they how are they boarded up here? Why did they also go to Santa Monica? Why haven't we confronted the main cast yet? I'm, a, I'm assuming Shadow skated over there with her on his shoulder. <laughs> oh no, he can teleport, so he can do chaos control. <laughs> Shadow's the only one who it's actually kind of practical for. You can just ride over. That's fair. That's pretty good. Do you think Joy can also do chaos control with the chaos emblem? If she did, it would break Shadow's brittle little mind. Silver, <laughs> Silver did it when he just learned what it was. Ah, that's true. He was he unabashedly used chaos control despite not knowing what it is. <laughs> <laughs> he just watched him Shadow do that and raised an eyebrow and said the same words and it worked. Shadow kicked him in the back of the head and gave him knowledge he never knew before. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Well, I haven't had their yummy burgers yet, but I just know that they will have the best sliders I ever had. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Please. Please go the way I want it to go. <laughs> this would be so perfect <laughs> if all of this is just building up. I hate White Castle. <laughs> Shadow says all of a sudden. He's just stressed in his <laughs> Why the hell would you take me here for lunch? <laughs> My burgers taste like lard. How can you even believe for one second that these will be amazing for you? Mm? <laughs> Not even lunchtime, it's 8 a.m. <laughs> he works there, he's just so sick. It doesn't of work it. there. He doesn't? No! He lives I... in Buffalo. <laughs> We don't know what chain store he works at yet. <laughs> I thought he worked at No, we made castle. that up for a joke. Okay, okay. But he went off. I hate White Castle. <laughs> Just sitting in the booth after they ordered. <laughs> they always put mustard on my side. <laughs> I always say, take it off, take it off, but they never listen to me. It's not even on the receipt. <laughs> Okay, I will admit, I was a bit caught off guard with that statement, but no matter what, I need to stay positive. Oh, don't be like that, I said with some pure positivity and confidence. Sometimes you just need to try it enough times for it to be delicious to you, you know? So what, if it's made of nothing but lard? That shouldn't <laughs> stop you from filling your belly, right? I gave a, a rather over-exaggerated smile as backed up confidence into what I was saying. No, I'm not saying that consuming lard is the best thing for you, but it gives you comfort nonetheless. Plus, I'm sure it has some nutritional qualities to it. Somewhat. As I kind of expected, however, Shadow was silent towards me. <clears throat> he grunted as he crosses his arms and rolls his eyes when he is usually annoyed by me. Fortunately, I've gotten used to that, thanks to the many times that he has done that to me. <laughs> <laughs> In any case, I don't take it personally. 
I just let it fly by me like a summer breeze, with not a care in the world. Our bond won't improve if I show negativity as well, you know. So it's crucial that I stay securely positive. Do you think Shadow's kicked her in the back of the head before? <laughs> with chaos control so she couldn't defend herself? Mm. <laughs> then I thought of something really great. You know that TV cliche where a floating heft light bulb appears on the top of a person's head whenever they get a great idea? Well, I got a fun idea for an activity to do while we wait for those yummy burgers. There's a good chance that Shadow may not like it, but I'm going to take that glorious leap of faith and do it anyway. Besides, there's a good chance that he may like it and enjoy it. As long as there's a slim chance, that's just good enough for me. Oh, Shadow, I say very positively and a teeny bit anxiously. Shadow doesn't look at me right away. In fact, he's still kind of rolling his eyes from me. But that's okay. I intend to change that very soon. If you can think of anything fun you would like to do right now, anything at all, what would it be, I say? Leave! Shadow retorts with a rather <laughs> impatient face. Okay, and anything else other than me leaving here? No. Right, well, I have an idea that you might like very much. Can you guess what that might be? Huh? I'd rather leave. <laughs> well... There's a certain game I like to play when waiting for food in a restaurant called Would You Rather? It's one of my favorite games to play before having lunch. Does it involve leaving? <laughs> well, not really. Besides, we haven't even gotten to our food yet, you silly goose. To hell with that! Why don't we leave now? <laughs> they so paid for it! That's <laughs> so bad! My castle sucks. <laughs> Just leave. <laughs> How much could... Ten sliders be like one dollar? <laughs> it's like six. It's becoming very clear to me that Shadow really doesn't want to be here, or at least with me, but oh, I can't it. just make leave him here. Why would you leave him here? He doesn't want to be here. <laughs> Why would you leave and not take him with you? He could leave any time. We can teleport. He could leave you in California. He can take off his inhibitor ring and destroy the White <laughs> Castle. <laughs> But I can't just leave him here when he was clearly vulnerable. Going through a breakup normally involves a lot of emotions that doesn't involve happiness. Emotions such as sadness, anger, disgust, and others can flood a person's mind, especially when the person was the one that was dumped, like Shadow. As his friend, I can't leave him, even if he doesn't want me near him. Unfortunately, we couldn't play the game now. Why? Because our food is here. Our server was a very beautiful lady. She seems like she is from Asia, but I can't tell for sure. On her name tag, it says the name Rhea. I only know that <laughs> name from the three separate entities. The Italian ice shop, the distressed exotic dancer who wanted my body, and the main villain is from the TV show, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Regardless, Rhea is their server? <laughs> White Castle shouldn't even have a server. White Castle's fast food. She comes out with a paper hat on each of her little hair horn things. <laughs> I'm wearing a White Castle shirt, but she still has the really <laughs> short boobs <laughs> jutting out of it. She goes, ah, ha, 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 here's your sliders. What's that not big enough for ya? One! <laughs> she throws her wand straight to their table <laughs> and they grow. Make these burgers grow! <laughs> Regardless, I'm happy that she brung us our food. And you know what? I think I'm going to give her a nice big hug as my thanks. Oh, no. Boom! Ah! I shrieked as the explosion clearly startled me and our lovely server. It didn't stun Shadow, however. Nope, not for a second. He is such a trooper. But, but the entrance of the store was completely blown off. <laughs> the three of us then saw four rushed figures emerging from the now gaping hole of an entrance. <laughs> Much to my surprise, I knew immediately of those four. Sonic was holding Daffy Duck like an infant baby for some reason. I didn't know why, but I didn't question it immediately. The other two were Panty and Stalking Anarchy. I only knew of them from what Sonic and Daffy have told me about them. They are... More attractive than I previously imagined, let alone in person. What is this person's female power ranking? 
<laughs> I don't know. They really don't like Satsuki. <laughs> Maybe they're just insecure about how hot Sasuke was. Satsuki. <laughs> Sasuke. <laughs> Shout out girlfriend Sasuke. They have no eyebrows and Sasuke has really good eyebrows. <laughs> but they seem like very nice ladies, although they look pretty angry. Besides, any friends of Sonic and my lovely fiance are dear friends of mine. Although, now that I look more closely, Sonic and Daphne looked pretty upset as well. And they all seem to be staring at Rita. For some reason, I feel a bit uneasy. But no matter... Nothing like a happy, positive attitude from yours truly to brighten up anyone's mood. Let's see what all the damage is, shall we? Chapter seven. Disgust point of view. Disgust. Disgust. What? Back in, her back in Buffalo. <laughs> no, the setting is White Castle, Santa Monica, California. What? Eight thirty p.m. How did disgust get here? Then why is it twelve hours later? What? What happened? God dang it. There's no plot progression. <laughs> There's no plot to begin with. Ah, it's just the sign fell to fan fictions. I love it. I just want to know where Shadow works. Shadow what is he the manager of? <laughs> Shadow walks in. God, I hate I love how he's one floor up from Devil May Cry. <laughs> I never thought about what's above Dante's office. <laughs> he lives across from Bayonetta in disgust. No, he lives with Bayonetta in disgust. He lives across from Aqua and Oh, Lightning. that's right, that's right. Ugh. Sometimes I wonder what it would be like if I lived in Canada. All the crap that I'm going through right now could have probably been avoided if I had just moved to Canada. Wait, scratch that. Canadians have the lowest form of fashion sense I have ever seen. <laughs> okay. Also, I would practically starve with pride, knowing that I won't have to won't have to eat their horrible food. I don't really care how many of you say that. Oh, Canada is the greatest country in the entire world. This means that I'm also better than everyone else. I can also see Russia from my house. Whoever thinks of that clearly doesn't know what they're talking about. With the abysmal experience that I had there, I can say that Canada is the worst place to go on planet Earth. It's okay. a big fat F in my book. Okay. <laughs> I should go off on Canada. Why are we even talking to Disgust? Oh yeah, I guess I should introduce myself now. Whatever. My name is Disgust, and believe it or not, I work as a health inspector, not a fashion inspector or designer chief. Just a health inspector. Yeah. Uh, I'm low right now. Realistically, I'm not, but I certainly feel low as a mangy mole rat. Although I'm pretty knowledgeable of what gro what's gross and what's not, I would never consider doing something as grime-inducing as being a health inspector. For the rest of my life, I'd rather drink a glass of Clorox bleach than do that. I hope she's inspecting the that White Castle. <laughs> He's gonna lose his fucking restaurant. <laughs> Daffy starts going off and she goes, What if I health inspected your Olive Garden, Daffy Duck? And he goes, Please no! <laughs> his whole face turns blue. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't take a genius to see that I'm forced to work as one. Who is forcing me? My boss, of course. Who is enabling her to force me? My other co worker, of course. Who was suffering a slow, painful death because of them? Yours truly, but can you blame me? I have a 24-year-old tomboy of a Scottish princess who clearly doesn't care about her appearance and an over 10,000-year-old intergalactic witch who acts like she has authority over me, but clearly doesn't. I find it annoying that Merida notices that and doesn't do a thing about it whatsoever. I swear, her and Rita are so unbearingly stubborn it makes me want to throw up. The people's vomit. Yeah, Merida MacDonald and Rita freaking Repulsa, also known as the banes of my existence. No one cared who I was till I worked with them in this flawed food industry. <laughs> <laughs> you do not work with Rita. She works at White Castle. You go to her establishment to do your separate job. 
<laughs> she's just she's such you a live bad. in Buffalo. Why are you? Why do you have parole in Santa Monica? <laughs> the, <laughs> creator of Falso's White Castle is so notoriously dirty. They have to hire somebody from across the country. <laughs> Notoriously dirty. <laughs> to be able to inspect it properly. It really intimidates every inspector that comes by to giving them a good rating. <laughs> they had to call him back up. They had to call in the big guns. Disgust. <laughs> how can you? How could disgust possibly be a health inspector? She would find flaws with everything. <laughs> That's true. It's in her fucking name. I wonder if the person who wrote this story is like a, a fast food worker who's not a manager but thinks it's a cool job and also hates health inspectors i think this person who wrote the story is not old enough to work in a fast food restaurant <laughs> but also loves devil may cry so i don't know <laughs> they're checking off a lot of boxes Dante is so love. fucking cool that's for sure <laughs> today especially dirk secures the idea in my mind that merida and reed are the worst people i've ever worked with period let me explain why, as this whole thing goes down a dirty sewer. I normally don't go to Santa Monica, California. Why? Because I'm busy working with my version of Cinderella's evil stepsisters. Our company send us to Santa Monica for the weekend in order to inspect this really bland and washed up white castle <laughs> joint near the edge of the city. Why? Don't ask me. Seriously. <laughs> The reason is probably stupider than dressing up as a Tiffany and co lamp for Halloween. The only reason I didn't call off on the job was because they offered me a huge bonus. And I really wanted to go to Santa Monica. <laughs> this story makes me want to go to Santa Monica. What is even in Santa Monica? White Castle. <laughs> Have I been there? Where is Santa Monica in California? I don't know. I think it's somewhere on the coast. I think. Pretty sure. I bet we can find the exact White Castle the story's referencing. <laughs> <laughs> the White Castle on the coast of Santa Monica. Hell yeah. Now, I'm starting to regret coming here in the first place. All we needed to do was inspect the damn place. Uh, we didn't even accomplish that. We were about 45% done in the inspection. And all of a sudden, Rita Repulsive, Rita Repulsive decided to start... What would later become the day I regret my life, period. Did she start this ever growing fire? Yes. And that fire rises. We decided to take a breather and talk to the crew members who were in the kitchen at the time in a casual manner. Although, Merida and I were ultra strict when it comes to this type of work. We were still reasonable and fair, unlike our fellow ancient space witch. Rita decides to act spontaneous and tries to tell one of the new employees how to do their job. <laughs> <laughs> hey, nitwit! Rita says to one of the co-workers in an attempt to pose as a cheesy villain. Did I mention that her voice sounds like dying birds in a runway? I mean, the sound of it makes me sick to my stomach. Even if I imagine it, I'll start to gag in my mouth. Even if I... Oh. Because it makes me feel so rotten on the inside, like steamed broccoli. Ugh, they just sound so nasally and raspy and cringy. It literally gives me depression. <laughs> then again, what do you expect from a washed up hag like herself? Simple. Depression. Depression. Anyway, Rita starts going at it at this random co-worker just to feed her pride. And Merida and I had enough. Merida and I were forced to yell at the top because Rita Recession was whining like a hissy cat lady. Rita! We both yell like stressed lionesses. This is a completely different story. <laughs> Rita finally ended the crybaby session for the time being and cocks her head towards us. We were very pissed off. What? Rita retorts, still sounding like Alvin and the Chipmunks. <laughs> this brat doesn't know how to properly serve the customers. <laughs> this is a restaurant for Pete's sake, not a mobile home. <laughs> Imagine if the health inspector just started bullying one of your employees and yelling at them to do a better job. <laughs> no, Rita's yelling at her own employees. No. 
Imagine if Rita lived in a mobile home. <laughs> I'm sorry. She, they just keep describing Rita as like a co-worker. <laughs> she, she is a co-worker, but she's also the head co-worker, I guess. <laughs> You're the insane, said Merida in a very fierce tone. This is the first grand restaurant. They don't have to serve the customers themselves if they don't have to. Don't harass her, you web block, you got your nasally attitude. I don't have a nasally attitude, Rita retorts nasally. <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about, Miss McNuggets. <laughs> <laughs> Just like the one day I actually tolerated working as a health inspector was squeezed to death before my very eyes <laughs> like a coiled snake. <laughs> you're starting to test my patience, Rita. <laughs> said the ever-annoyed Merida. For the last time, just cause I'm a McDonald doesn't mean to have work at McDonald's. Yeah, so we racist, don't you think? Who is Merida? From uh, Brave, that one oh. movie. Oh. Yeah, Why well, Merida? Are we shooting for my own hand? That's, that's really funny. That's, that's what I thought it was, but I needed to make sure. Yeah, that, that's how she's written, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> she's written as I'm reading. I mean, that's how they write her, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Ha! You make me laugh. You couldn't even stomach a sardine sandwich, you half-wit ginger. (laughs) Now, this is where Merida begins to lose her temper. Oh no, that Irish temper. Remember when the White Castle door exploded when (laughs) Death and Sonic arrived? And now it's later in the day and they don't address it at all. Which was that? Merida says as she raises her voice even further. How dare you disrespect me? Look at you're pure asking for it, no? I, for one, have had it. I'm literally about to barf over how much depression this is giving me. If I don't stop this now, I might give in to it. I inhaled as much as I could, focused, and yelled, Shamrock! They were caught off guard by me shouting at them. But I don't care. They're going to listen to me for once, and I don't care what happens afterward. Disgust? Merida says to me in a surprised tone. I gave her a quick glance and immediately shifted to Rita Repulsa afterwards. Seriously? I said in the most harshest of tones. I'll tell you right now, I'm straight up done with this fiasco. I'm about to go off on her like green on broccoli. It's clear that your tiny little walnut that you call a brain can't comprehend the fact that you are an old hag who sounds like a tipsy Fran Drescher having a baby. Of course that's true, except you're too stupid to realize that. Let alone your screw up. Do you not? Do you acknowledge that? Well, duh, of course not. So I have no choice but to dumb it down to your level and simply say this. You suck! Disgust <laughs> from inside out called Rita Repulsa and Walnut Brain. <laughs> Can't believe Rita Repulsa and Meredith are arguing about being health inspectors in this White Castle. This is They're episode. not the health inspectors, they work at the White Castle. <laughs> this, is, this is like an episode of Kitchen Nightmare, to be honest. Rita was clenching her fist in anger of what I was saying to her. Oh, no. Clearly, she can't handle the truth. How stupid she... How, wait, I'm oh, sorry. Uh, I lost. How could she anyway? She's a stupid witch. She, she's lucky we were at a public place or I would have been so much harsher. But the fact that I'm making her pissy puts a smile on my face and gives me satisfaction. Things were getting a little better in my book. Unfortunately, the feeling went away. Why? Because she decided to serve the next people that are waiting in line. Ah, I cannot stand her sometimes, Merida says. <laughs> Finally, a thing we can actually agree on. Although with me, I just can't stand her, period. We went, We both went to the look through of one of the windows of the kitchen, leading to the clear view of the dining room. Much to my surprise, I found two of my good friends. who we were surprisingly having lunch together. My roommate, Shadow the Hedgehog, who's go, going through a deliberate breakup, and Joy, who deliberately wore off one of my dresses to a date with her fiancé, <laughs> Daffy Duck, without my permission, and she wonders why I'm mad at her. Okay, so I'm going to retcon that they meant a.m. and not p.m. earlier. Like, what time was it now? 8.30. It said 8.30 p.m., but the last one was 8.10 a.m., so I'm going to assume they meant it's a.m. They just had a typo. 
I'm surprised none of them heard the door explode. <laughs> I'm surprised they never they didn't hear Merida and Rita screaming at each other. <laughs> Imagine in Meredith in like that squeezed tiny White Castle cap with her giant hair. <laughs> well, Joy was just blocking it all out to give her monologue. <laughs> all of a sudden, a group of four blow up the entrance to the store for like no reason. Oh yeah, there we go. And speed through the newly blasted hole they have created. Who were they? Well, it was Sonic and Daffy, and their two skanks of they <laughs> and the two skanks that they room with on the weekends, like this one. When I looked towards them, they looked very angry. We know what the best part of this was. They all wanted to beat the living vomit out of Rita Renard. <laughs> that made me so happy. <laughs> I turned my head to the right, assuming that Merida was right next to me, as she was before. Um, She disappeared. She, like, never does that so suddenly. Except she does when she sees an opportunity to settle something. Next thing I know... <laughs> Something rockets out of the serving window, nearly hitting me all together. Then I took then I took a closer look. At first, I thought it was Tony Stark with his Iron Man suit appearing out of nowhere. Then I see the robot carrying Merida's bow and arrow, and you guessed it, it was Merida wearing a female Iron Woman suit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Suddenly, she charges through one of the glass windows and flew out of there quickly. There was already a giant hole blasted. Them. That caught me off guard. Rita's gonna be so mad. <laughs> what beef could Merida possibly have with Shadow? I swear. No one tells me stuff anymore. Classic gossip is now dead to me. <laughs> Joy was taken off guard too, along with the rest of the humble crew involving the angel skanks. Then all of a sudden, Rita Regurgitation decides to have a conniption and violently transforms into her true form. <laughs> With every offense I can give towards her, her outfit looks like schizophrenic space vomit. Just, ew. Rita Regurgitation. <laughs> but now it, has, now it has finally arrived. The day I regret as a whole, I actually have to fight. Now I'm here to mess up this very expensive cashmere dress due to me putting Rita Ragdoll in her place. Why would she wear an expensive cashmere dress to do a health inspection? At White White Castle. (laughs) White Castle's destroyed. (laughs) For once, though, I don't mind. As long as I beat her ass, nothing will make me happier at this point. And just in case, I'm in a pinch, and I have a trump card. And that trump card will be the end of Rita Ridicule. Although one thing does concern me, Merida and Shadow are about to go at it. And from the vibe of hostility I got from Merida towards my roomie, it doesn't look like it'll be pretty. But I shouldn't be concerned. Shadow is the ultimate life form. Merida's an impulsive Scotswoman with a bow and arrow and an iron woman suit. He can take her easily. He's dealt with much worse anyway. And that was the end. Yay. Unfortunately, we have a cliffhanger of that legendary story. God, I wanted to continue so bad. Meredith Iron, Iron Man. Like, seriously, if the writer is lis- listening to this, I don't care how long it's been, please <laughs> give us more Sonic and Santa Monica. I absolutely love everything about it. It is the coolest story. It is, holy shit. Please rate the back half of that story. I give that a 10 out of 10 sliders that Shadow can't stand eating. I give it a one very tight scrunchie on Meredith's giant hair trying to fit under the White Castle employee hat. And an Iron Man mask. <laughs> and an Iron Man mask all wrapped around her head inside of that dome. I give it Two lo- two vastly pointed of boobs in a White Castle t-shirt <laughs> out of two. Holy oh, shit. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. That was fun. Thank you for letting me go so long on that. I can take a break. Okay. Yeah. We will be right back after these commercial messages. The year's retrofire sequence. Three, two, one, mark. Malfunction! We're out of control! Where? I know what I like. so unique. White Castle. Taste is the meaning of White Castle. Without White Castle, every hamburger tastes the same. Alright, it's my turn. Okay, so do you want to... Don't just jump into it. You, you could 
considerate ass. Okay, I'm gonna give a, I'm gonna give us the recap. Tell us all about it. All right. Last time on Corey's crazy quest, Corey had left the White House and was lazing around on his couch with fucking money and shit. But then one day he left the house to go into the woods for an inconceivable amount of time, only to find a Pokeball, which contained a Pikachu. Later, he found a hat that, be- that, belong- that turned out to belong to Jotaro Joestar. And upon putting the hat on his head, Corey... Corey, con- Corey gained all of Jotaro's mannerisms, including just looking really upset and saying "Yare Yare Daze." It was revealed. <laughs> we then later met Ryuko Kiri- Ryuko Matoi, who, as it turns out, was Jotaro's ex-boyfriend and was trying to get after him. Then they had a Pokemon battle with, oh god, what's Ryuko's mom's name? Ragyo. Ragyo Kiryu, in which they won. Later, they met the Super Mario Brothers, but did nothing of interest. You forgot about all the times Sasuke was freaking out. Oh, true. (laughs) They... Naruto and Sasuke were there too. Yeah, they were there in the Pokemon battle and whatnot. The po- the Pokemon battle was actually just Cory's part in the entire schema. Let's see here. Well, not to cut you off, but what episodes can they find these delightful tales from? You can find this. Uh, you can find these chapters in our JoJo episode, as well as. What was the other episode? Because uh, we had the jo- Pokemon? JoJo and... Also, I apologize for giving such an abridged version. There were six chapters of these and a lot of characters and a lot of shit goes down. <laughs> so I'm just trying not to waste too much time. Where have I heard that before? <laughs> the JoJo episode and... I believe JoJo was episode four, I'm pretty sure. Mm-hmm. No. It was episode eight. Oh, eight. Uh, um, the other one should have. I'm pretty sure they have the. The other one has Corey in the thumbnail, mm-hmm. in the cool hat. By the way, that episode. Once you find it and you can enlighten the ch- the show, I love doing that. I I did the, a really dumb like Dragon Ball, <laughs> like recap, splicing all the uh, like old sound bites from the earlier episode. <laughs> that was very fun. But later, we met Obi-Wan Kenobi and Robbie Rotten. Robbie Rotten stole Obi-Wan's lightsaber and then left into a... Left into... It turned out Robbie Rotten was working for Dio and left it to find his master and give him the lightsaber. While looking for him, they came across Shrek. Oh, it's uh, Pokemon episode 29. Okay, Pokemon. Told you. Okay. Jo- Jojo and then Pokemon. Later on, they met Shrek, and then out of nowhere, Shrek was defeated by none other than Tito Dick, the owner of the Nut Shack. <laughs> oh yes, that is where we left off, isn't it? And now, the continuation. Chapter 7, The ShamWow Decoration of the Cowboys. Just gave myself a late cramp. <laughs> you okay? As someone who's uh, just remembering based on your description, that didn't help me out very much, except for that Corey is the main character, and he has Jotaro's hat and a Pokeball. And also, this is like in a dream sequence. Okay. <laughs> like, the anime stuff is always in a dream, then he wakes up and goes to have a normal life, and he's like, I have to go back to sleep, I have to go to the anime realm again. Guys, just just watch the episodes, there's no way I can do any of this justice by describing. <laughs> it's true, and it's very funny. Mm-hmm. Corey and the gang stood before the menacing figure, Tito Dick, then walked back into the portal, dragging Dio with him. <laughs> dragging his corpse. <laughs> After him, Naruto screamed as he rushed towards the portal. Wait, Naruto, Sasuke screamed as he was dragged in by him. The rest of the group stood, frozen in fear and confusion for a moment. It was a minute before they all chased after Tito and their allies. 
Once they had all gone through the portal, it closed behind them, leaving the dark and ominous Sevastopol station behind. The place they were now was very colorful and looked like it was made with terrible CGI. (laughs) They saw Naruto and Sasuke on the ground before them. Naruto! Sasuke! Kori Kori and Ryuko yelled in unison, rushing to the ninjas. I... I still can't see, Sasuke muttered. Oh yeah, I'm fucking <laughs> blind. <laughs> Forgot about that. Look out, the orange ninja began. Look out for the mailman. They all looked at him in confusion. They had then realized that Tito Dick was nowhere in sight. Corey then asked, What mailman? Almost as if on cue, a small mail van drove up from another badly animated platform. <laughs> Is as... that the mailman from all of the other reindeer? I was, I, was, I was thinking it was going to be the mailman from Santa's coming to town. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> now that's bad CGI. Not even CGI. <laughs> <laughs> that's what makes it so bad. It's below even CGI. <laughs> As they stood over a massive lake of lava, as it came to a stop before them, giant letters appeared in the sky and read, Level 4. Oh no. Oh no, is this a Spy Kids 3 reference? (laughs) This place seemed familiar to Cory, but he couldn't quite figure out what this place was from. I hope Cory is the guy. (laughs) I hope he gets the mega legs. (laughs) (laughs) He doesn't need them. He can walk. You know, Grandpa gonna... couldn't walk. You know he'll take it. Him. It's hard for him, okay? He wants to feel tall. <laughs> it makes him like two inches taller. The mega legs. He's still not as tall as Chodoro. <laughs> but he couldn't quite figure out what this place was from. The doors of the mail van opened up and three figures stepped out. One of them was Tito Dick. Another one looked like a mailman who Corey was completely unfamiliar with. And the other one was wearing a cowboy hat and held an umbrella, which he immediately tossed into the lava lake. Ooh, there's a lava lake. (laughs) Yeah. Did somebody ring the dinkster? The last guy asked (laughs) to (laughs) no one in particular. (laughs) <laughs> Corey recognized him as Dinky Wings from Spy Kids 2. No! <laughs> no! <laughs> we hate Spy Kids 2 on the island of Lost Dreams. <laughs> How? How do we keep going back to this? And it gives us more and more relevant material that we've just gone over. <laughs> the fucking cowboy guy from Spy Kids 2. <laughs> I hate him so much. He is a true villain amongst the likes of Tio Dick and the mailman. Holy shit. Corey recognized him as Dinky Wings from Spy Kids 2, <laughs> Island of Lost Dreams, one of his favorites. <laughs> it was at that moment he, ro- he realized exactly where they were. They were in level 4 of Game Over. No! <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you called that. Oh, I shit. knew which level it was. I, yeah. I just knew it was level four. That could be anything. <laughs> we just watched Spike Hits 3. The bad CGI, level four. Tito Dick is up. there. A random lava lake. <laughs> oh, God. We watched all the Spy Kids for Christmas. You were on the floor cackling about the island of lost dreams. <laughs> Rink, Linky Dink, Rinky, whatever his name is. Steven. I don't like when you do that. We don't need you anymore, Dinky, Tito said. Postman Pat! The, then the mailman threw a stamp at Dinky, and a brown cardboard box began to form around him. Once the box was sealed, it was suddenly launched away, leaving behind his cowboy hat and branding iron. 
<laughs> no, it was Brandon Iron. <laughs> Killed him off immediately. The group was shocked, except... <laughs> they just found a postman, Pat. Mm. He's very funny. <laughs> that fucking guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's a very funny claymation model. <laughs> the group was shocked, except for Sasuke, who was still blind. <laughs> Jotaro and Ryuku gritted their teeth and prepared themselves for an attack. <laughs> Gross CG postman pad. <laughs> Pikachu stood defensively in front of Cory while Naruto pushed Sasuke behind him. Their party is so fucking big. <laughs> it is. The odds were in the gang's favor, six on two. However, these two before them, Tito Dick and Postman Pat, appeared to be <laughs> radiating with energy and power. <laughs> Claymation is basically a golem. It's scary. Yeah. Get up now and bow to me, Tito began. Dio was my minion all along. His ally, Zawardo, is now under my control. Zawardo is the reason that you're here, Cory Baxter. Cory gasped as everyone else turned to look at him. Pikachu then growled and charged forward to attack Tito with full tackle. <laughs> Just before the electric mass made contact with the middle-aged man, the blue blanket emerged from him and slapped Pikachu away. The blanket appeared to have a football helmet and star on it, which Corey recognized as the logo for the Dallas Cowboys NFL team. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the Pokemon was sent flying into Postman Pat. He just Mario caped him. He did <laughs> The peak of the Pokemon was sent flying into Postman Pat and electrified him. The man in the blue male man uniform began to shake violently from the high voltage, <laughs> coursing through his body. Maybe you shouldn't have offed your ally so easily. He unconsciously began to drop his stamps, which landed on both him and Pikachu. As the stamps made contact with them, multiple cardboard boxes began to form around the two of them. Once all of the boxes were sealed, they were launched away across the lava lake. Not Pikachu. <laughs> Pikachu, no! Cory screamed as he watched his new friend get launched far away from him. Not five on one. Well, what happened? Sasuke demanded. <laughs> They're really milking this Sasuke's blind gag. That's gotta kind of suck for the man who's like most special thing about him is his eyes. Right. He lost so much power. <laughs> the whole group was shocked. Naruto and Jotaro were speechless while Ryuko covered her mouth. Cory fell to his knees and began to shed some tears. Sasuke moved the headband over his eyes up and only made out a blurred image of the scene before him. He gritted his teeth as he made out the figure of Tito Dick <laughs> cackling maniacally. Flying Jutsu, he cried as, he, as his body began to radiate with a blue aura before charging at the villain. Naruto was surprised to see him act but then joined his charge after yell, yelling ninja jutsu soon after Jodoro and Ryuko joined in with star platinum and scissor blade respectively Tito just stood there as two glowing ninjas a schoolboy with a ghostly man and a schoolgirl with an unusual weapon approached him at incredible speeds just before they struck the blankets just before they struck the blanket stretched down wrapped itself around all four of them the blanket then timed to restrain them. Oh, no. The ninja's auras began to dissipate and Star Platinum began to phase back into Jotaro. For them, they were done for. <laughs> they got wrapped in a fucking blanket? What Ryo is... Ryoko can cut out of the blanket with her big scissor. Star Platinum can move outside of the blanket. <laughs> <laughs> you squeeze so much life down Jotaro that Star Platinum is ceasing to exist. <laughs> Suddenly, Cory rose. He wiped his face. He's about to unveil his true power. <laughs> He's a super being. He wiped his face and glared at the man holding his new friends hostage. 
Kor then put his hands together and began to charge up energy. Ka <laughs> me ha me ha me. He started while slowly moving his hands back and forth. <laughs> Tito Dick grinned, eyes wide behind his sunglasses. The others <laughs> continued to struggle in the blanket's grasp. His eyes popping out of his head like Foxy. Do you think he used one or two hands to do the blanket? Ooh, Tito Dick. Yeah. I imagine it's like a fucking hanky in his shirt. He just pulls it out. He's like... Ah. <laughs> His big Texas blanket. (laughs) Ha me, ha me, ha me. Damn. Corey continued, his hands beginning to glow. Ha me, ha me, ha me, ha! He then thrust his hands forward, sending the energy it just charged up into a beam which hit Tito. (laughs) Fortunately, none of his friends got hit by his new attack. Tito and the blanket were suddenly launched back, the latter releasing the hostages. The man screamed his pain as he and his now ruined blanket fell into the lava lake. No, it's not his blanket. Suddenly, large text appeared in the sky and read, Game over. <laughs> <laughs> he had done it. Naruto, Ryuko, Jotaro, and Sasuke who could now see, looked at their savior. Just as Neo had predicted, Cory had become an S-class Super Hokage Desu-chan master. You did it, Naruto cheered. Are you all okay? Cory asked as he then approached his friends. All of a sudden, the texture for the video game level began to break and fade away. They all looked around them, scared. Since you beat him, Cory, Jodo began, Zawardo's power is wearing off. This world is ending. Cory then looked at all of his new friends, feeling a deep pain with the absence of one member. Oh, no. The two ninjas looked at his with sad looks. This is where you go, Cory, Naruto muttered, smiling sadly. Cory gasped. He then gave everyone a group hug. They all began to weep as the world around them began to fade. Cory woke up with a start. He was back in the forest. After looking in every direction, he realized that none of his new friends were there. He covered his face and shed a single tear. It had all been a dream, or so he thought. He then felt something in his pocket. Cory quickly reached into his pocket and pulled out a folded up photo. He unfolded and gasped at what he saw. The photo was of him with Naruto, Sasuke, Pikachu, Jotaro, Ryuko, and Neo. Corey. (laughs) Yeah, Neo was there, remember? It's like the photo at the end of Jotaro Part Mm -hmm. (laughs) 3. The Stardust Crusaders. Yeah. (laughs) Corey. Game Over Crusaders. (laughs) Corey could not contain the emotions he was feeling any longer. Me neither. He immediately broke down crying. He was real, he muttered mid-cry. After what seemed like a year, Corey finally composed himself. A year. (laughs) He stood tall and proud as he wiped his face, then walked out of the forest. When he did, Corey noticed that he was in the garden of the White House. He really had not gone far from the house. I forgot he lived in the White House. <laughs> Corey has transcended his origins. With his newfound courage, Corey decided that he could talk to the president to allow him to still watch anime. <laughs> he knew that he would make many new enemies, but he would also make new friends. He began to make his way back into the White House. Just before he walked inside... He paused for a moment and looked at the sky. Corey then said, Wow, that was a really crazy quest. <laughs> to be continued. Yay. That was a beautiful story. That only took two years to read it. <laughs> <laughs> what an adventure. I give that story... Uh, 
as many feet as postman pat packages of fly out of ten. I give the uh, Spy Kids five out of five. <laughs> <laughs> I give that an H villain style <laughs> getting rid of fucking Dinky. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you didn't get too attached to him, fellas. <laughs> Spy Kids 2 existing in Spy Kids 3. Dinky is so funny. <laughs> I'm glad he existed only to die. In Spy Kids 3, he just appears to brand the big robot with his funny brander. Yeah. <laughs> it's cursed. Tino Dick with the power of Zawano. <laughs> he didn't really use it. I mean, maybe he did to get them all in the cloth but i don't know yeah, apparently that's what they said they're like tito dick has been defeated since i want his power is fading oh dio working underneath tito dick from the nut shack i hope jotaro and riko get back together mm-hmm. we could destroy that woman that's true okay i'm ready for my story you guys are ready to read Give us a little recap on the old, reliable, old, faithful, as we like to call it, the old world. Okay, this is a story about Shaggy and Scooby visiting Chipotle. So, Shaggy and Scooby, after cooking seven pizzas at home so they'll be ready when they get back, head to Chipotle. With seven pizzas in the oven, they order and they sit down. Um, They don't pay, they just sit down. (laughs) Fred Flintstone comes in at one point and starts talking about how he could make Scooby famous and puts his arm around him. And Shaggy gets so upset that he stands up and monologues and then punches him so hard in the jaw, he dents it. (laughs) And then Fred gets knocked cold on the floor and dies, and the Chipotle people have to drag him out of the store. (laughs) Uh, Then Daphne and Velma come in to say hi, and they are described as these big funny bimbos, and then they go to the bathroom. And uh, Shaggy and Scooby peek on them while they're in the bathroom, and then they get grossed out and leave. They don't know who it is, though. Shaggy's convinced they'll forget about it once they go shopping again. (laughs) (laughs) And you can find this, the rest of this delightful story, in episode two, Scooby-Doo. Yes. Um, Something else to note is the food is often described in great detail as disgusting, and they've been here for, like, hours now, so it's just, like, rotting. And uh, where we left off was the waiter just threw the food away. <laughs> and then Shaggy came up and offered to pay, but he only offered to pay with $20, which is just, it says he has more money, but he didn't want to give it up. He just gave him a $20 bill. And the waiter was so offended, he tried to stab him with a knife, like a switchblade he had in his pocket. And Shaggy dodged it. And then he walked over to the door and opened it and said, all right, leave. And then... That's the end of where we left off, because we were laughing about him trying to stab, but <laughs> the next the next sentence is wham, back at the table, so they didn't leave, they just went back to sit down. <laughs> oh, fuck. <clears throat> okay. Back to the story. Shaggy and Scooby have had their food thrown away, and now they've sat back down at the table after being threatened by the waiter. To be stabbed. There's not waiters at Chipotle, so I imagine it's just like the register woman. Yeah, this is like register guy. Register. Wham! Back at the table. Shaggy was getting irritated by these mental gymnastics and demanded a refund of all the time being wasted. <laughs> a After, refund for his time? <laughs> he, he ordered a huge pile of food, by the way, like a massive amount of food. A lot of which was brought from home. No, he said he wants a refund of his time. <laughs> Give it back, man. <laughs> Like, give it back, man. I've got things to do. But the butler was gone, and Scooby was too. Uh, yeah, so Shaggy went back to his table, but I guess Scooby's gone now. For somehow. Somehow. But the butler was gone, and Scooby was too. Like, you know, Scooby-Doo, where are you? He scratched his head <laughs> really hard while I sat at a table vacant of all but a salt shaker and a dimple of whipped cream, a napkin folded neatly, and shaving cream. I can't live off this stuff, man. (laughs) Zoinks! Zoinks! Shaggy once again attempted running around the store, running in a perpetual pattern from the table to the door, over and over again in a repeating cycle, with his velocity increasing. (laughs) Using his cartoonish leg strength, he kept trucking on his shoes and green shorts, and his dampened red polo shirt, and reached speeds upwards of 45 miles per hour. 
He ran so fast that at one point he tripped and somersaulted straight through the glass automatic doors. Oh my god. He's just causing a scene. Running 45 miles an hour inside a Chipotle. And he tripped over his big ass <laughs> shoes. The rare, the rarely seen red shirt, Shaggy. He somersaulted straight through the glass automatic doors, shattering them, only for him to reemerge at the table without a scratch. <laughs> <laughs> but he kept persisting and desisting and insisting until finally the door gave way and he fell into the employee kitchen. Where, <laughs> where Scooby was waiting intently. Are you ready to eat, Shaggy? Scooby brought in bulk food basics from the deep freezer. Pre-cooked salad. <laughs> mashed nanners. Mashed naters, I'm sorry. Mashed potatoes. A rosebud bouquet. Danish apple jacks. And Jackie Jack Jack Jack. <laughs> Truly food had never been so vicious before. This is written by a psychopath. I can't even... <laughs> parse this sometimes <laughs> I just love those banners. complete with his teeth with complete with teeth decals of the bad news bears and a CD case full of gummy pineapples it was just getting old beep beep a bus announced they heard it outside a breath of fresh air an attempt for escape the sound of kids pouring into a restaurant that was only 16 by 16 feet a crowd they would say, Ooga Booga, Ooga Booga. The kids were chanting inside the room, waiting for dinosaur chicken nuggets. What a joke. Shaggy put on his chef's hat and walked out to the customer area to, <laughs> to, to greet them. He doesn't work there. <laughs> so asinine. Like, welcome to Chipotle. I'm your host. <laughs> I'm your host, Chef Shaggy, eater of all the food in the house. How can I, like, take your order, man? He addressed this to every intent pair of eyeballs, full of youth and hunger. Do you have dinosaur chicken nuggets? One girl with a crew cut inquired. Like, we can always check, man. Hey, Scoob, do we have any of those minotaur chicken nuggets? Scooby jumped inside of the freezer and didn't come out for some time. <laughs> After two minutes, the... <laughs> After two minutes, the door opened sluggishly, and he slowly walked over in the thralls of hibernation. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> this descriptor is so funny. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm crying already. <laughs> Scooby jumped inside of the freezer and didn't come out for some time. After two minutes, the door opened sluggishly and he slowly walked over in the thralls of hypothermia with a bag of frozen <laughs> nuggets in his mangy muzzle. <laughs> like, congratulations, Scoob! Shaggy crossed his arms. While you were dead. <laughs> so what? That's how you get to a new sentence. <laughs> Lose it. <laughs> then you regain your composure. Then you get to the next sentence. The writer's just that good. Okay, Scoo <laughs> Scooby came out, opened the door sluggishly with the nuggets in his mouth by the bag. And then Shaggy says, Like, congratulations, Scoob. Shaggy crossed his arms. While you were diddling around in the fridge, all the kids left out of impatience. And... <laughs> I called one of them a nerd, and he started wetting his pants. <laughs> it was two minutes. <laughs> Water. That, girl, that kid was so scared of Shaggy. Oh god. I need some tissues also. You made the kid wet his pants by calling him a nerd. His aura imposed to make him look larger than he is as he bent over and said, 
Nerd. <laughs> like a damn nerd. You're just a little buckworm, aren't you? Go on, get out of my Chipotle. We don't treat your kind around here. Magic Chipotle <laughs> Shaggy. Very scary and confusing. Like, we hate nerds around here, man. So you better, like, get out of here. <laughs> Shaggy started scratching his chin, proud of the fickle accomplishment he had just committed. Shaggy warmed himself up by almost dying, and when he came to, he realized that they still had four hours before closing time. Truly a monotonous experience. Oh, God! <laughs> <laughs> Me and Steve just like looked at each other trying to comprehend what you just said. Shaggy warmed himself up by almost dying. <laughs> How you do that? What? He was just scratching his chin. He <laughs> just sticks his head in the oven. <laughs> we'll never know. Oh, God. God. He had four hours before closing time. Truly a monotonous experience from any pedigree. Well, Scoob, if we have to wait this long, we might as well hit the hay. Scooby mocked. <laughs> Shaggy looked at Scooby with an evil eye. <laughs> and you said <laughs> Shaggy looked at Scooby with an evil eye and said, You get the sheets, I'll get the pillows. They walked around the establishment looking for sleepwear to get acquainted with <laughs> and actually found two sleeping bags. One a polyester blue, the other one pure wool. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Read on. Uh, the other one was pure wool. Who would be at you tonight? They battled for hours about this. Bonks to the heads, broken teeth, and an eyeball was irritated to the point of no return. Oh my god. Big swollen eye. Scooby would never see the same again. And Shaggy had a ra- Shaggy had rashes all over his body. Wonder where they came from. Developing postules of strange size and dynamic, Shaggy allowed himself to succumb to the disease in order to get a good night's sleep, and Scooby just couldn't shut that eye, thus preventing him from sleeping. <laughs> they got into a fight for hours. This one, that's horrible. He gave his dog an infection. <laughs> they both got infection somehow. What's that... No, what they're describing is what's the pink eye? No, uh, <laughs> what's like insulation made of? Oh, cyber fiberglass. Fiberglass. I think what they found was the like coating <laughs> and the fiberglass <laughs> of this of this yeah, material. <laughs> so one, one of them are polyester <laughs> blue. One, one just the one, just the one is sleeping in a blanket of cyber <laughs> fiberglass, and the other one is. Just sleeping in the like metallic coating of the in, like the insulation. <laughs> One in metal, the other in bright pink. His eyes couldn't close because it was too swollen, so he couldn't go to sleep. <laughs> Shaggy's itchy from sleeping in fiberglass. Why God, that's get... so scary. Oh, that is horrible. Like Scoob, you get the one with Pink Panther on it, man. <laughs> That's okay. horrible. God. This I is have animal. Had enough time sleeping as it is. This actual animal, <laughs> this poor thing. Dog. This is gonna be the best night ever. Shaggy thought to <laughs> <laughs> thought to himself. He just said he was succumbing to his disease, <laughs> so he could sleep. Warped. Oh, Drifting into sleep. Oh no! Scooby screamed. C- cicadas started to chirp outside like it was n- night, but surely it wasn't. They just turned off all the lights to create the illusion it was an appropriate time to sleep. Shaggy's fever and they're just in the Chipotle with all the lights off. They turned them off. They're in like the middle of the shift. They, just, like, they said they had four hours off. left. 
Shaggy's fever intensified, and all the sweat started pooling around him in a grimy stoner manner, while Scooby was just in pieces. That eye of his needed the doctor's attention, and he was starting to feel exhausted. Aww. Luckily, oh luckily, a small bottle of clear eyes was just in the cabinet, and when he found out, he dumped the entire thing on his giant swollen eye. <laughs> Instantaneously, it disappeared, the entire eyeball, and he could rest. Thank God. Neither of them minded the infestation of lizards running laps around their sleeping bodies. All sorts of skinks doing lizardy flips and chattering their knockers. <laughs> Nippy lizard mouths snapping and cooling in melodious manners. Lizard songs, lizard dances. All of these lizards dancing in group situations, group <laughs> efforts, chanting inaudibly, taking turns jumping off Shaggy's erection. In quotes, he was sick. These were the lizards that found things to do when no one else was doing anything. Fine lizards of seven different colors. They all were monogamous, with families, good values, long bloodlines. Diseased, dirty lizards with no eyes. Just dance around the dying like skeletons would do if they had the time. Tongue-lashing lizards, beaked buffoons. Scary, scaly scabs of existence, pouring their effort into the demise of two cartoon characters. Scooby already ate half of them by accident. He tends to bite around when he's in REM sleep. <laughs> and plenty of lizards... Plenty of lizards could not foresee such gnashing, especially from a pup named Scooby-Doo. Shaggy woke up having smallpox and seeing lizards escaping his peripheral vision. Like, I don't feel so good, Scoob. It must have been the pizza. Shaggy attempted to get on his, ha- on his hind legs, but fell back down on the ground. He knew he caught a pretty bad cold, so he could get an EpiPen of Sudafed out and lodge it into his neck. So he got an EpiPen of Sudafed out and lodged it into his neck. The pox on his body started to swell into big ballooning bubbles of plague. And yop! All of them popped. Spiders crawled everywhere. Ah, oh, what a relief! Shaggy exasperated <laughs> as the colonies of spiders took to the corners and stayed there. Scooby was still sleeping, still getting a good night's sleep, still waiting for the doors to finally close on them. It was 6 p.m., and Chipotle was finally closing. They got out of the kitchen, attempting to open the new locked doors, and cried in frustration. Rike! Rike, we're never gonna grow out of rear this place, Raggy. Shaggy put his paws over his eyes, and he just had a ball and fit, slobbering, guffawbering, guffa- even coughing up body parts. Now, Scoob, if you get into these crying fits, it's just gonna remind me of chopping up onions, and we all know what that does to you. <laughs> Shaggy cracked his back and dispensed the Pez out of his tongue, only to re-ingest it. <laughs> now school. Right. Why do you do that? That's now school. I have an idea. And if you're okay with it, we're going to break the law. <laughs> Scooby complied by standing on his hind legs and walking around like a human being. <laughs> Yo. Finally, they took a stroll to the kitchen area again where there was an air vent, completely chilled for exploration, and they used the power of two sentient beings, Elmer Fudd and Bugs Bunny, to shimmy up into the vent and start crawling. I just imagine them and their, like, TV show walk cycle walking to the kitchen. <laughs> yeah. Chipotle. Our resident cat crusader Magnus is causing a ruckus. Anyway, oh, he wants your AirPods. I see. He wants to listen wirelessly to Crossing the Line on his favorite podcasting app. So now they're shimmying up the vent. Mm-hmm. Scooby was already an expert at this, learning from Philip J. Fry. But Shaggy didn't pay attention to TV, so he got his, and so he got his fat self stuck in there. <laughs> like I'm stuck, Scoob. <laughs> Rero, Fraggy. Scooby was fed up with Shaggy's lack of athletic power. (laughs) Using his teeth, he pulled Shaggy through this event with all his might for what had had to have been several miles until the finally reached the Chipotle, the location 16 miles away. And this one was open. They fell in through the entrance of the Chipotle. Wait, they crawled through the vent? 
<laughs> and made it to another Chipotle. <laughs> they crawled for 16 miles. <laughs> and they were still open when they got there. Shaggy dragged fucking Scooby dragged Shaggy by his shirt in a bed for 16 hours. <laughs> his face just <laughs> <laughs> Come on, watch coins, man. What? Like pull harder, Scoob. I want to see you break a sweat. I'm hungry. They fell in through to the entrance of Chipotle, where their previously discarded food was awaiting them again. What? <laughs> I guess the, the the waiter just shoved it through the vent to the other Chipotle location. Brought it or maybe they maybe there. they mean this one just was stocked with food again. Yeah, maybe they just crawled around for 16 miles in the ventilation unit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we can go back to what we were doing, Scoob. Scooby agreed non-vocally, and they sat down, getting to work on those baked burrito bazillions, disappearing like pizza rolls in the clutches of these mad scientists. Like, Scoob, you gotta try these, he told Scooby, who was obviously eating them. Why don't you try... Why don't you try one, man? Scooby, I think that was supposed to be Shaggy, but it's Scooby said. Scooby didn't care much for Shaggy's stupidity and kept at him, devouring them like a mother eel would devour her young. Just in time, too, because by this point, they had taken in almost half of the food on the table. Success. Started to fall out. <laughs> Success. The calories were starting to add up, and Shaggy's hair started to fall out. <laughs> it wasn't the sickness, but rather too much of the sauce he was using. It, he was using. It wasn't sauce. It was acid. He poured it on his head, for Christ's sake. This wasn't even a sauce as much as it was a saucy situation. Because every grown woman likes bald heads. He and man. scalped himself <laughs> during the meal. <laughs> this is about to take a really fucked turn. Oh, yes. This wasn't a sauce as much as it was a saucy situation. Because even grown women like bald heads. And man... If those chicks were coming back, then he had to have some sort of surprise waiting for those bitches. <laughs> they took out a chilled halo from a freezer and shared it. They putting it on each other's heads, reenacting the gods that they spited as children. Look at me, Scoob! I'm an apostle of hell! Scabby, <laughs> Scabby lurched forward and lost control of himself, <laughs> spilling all the saliva out of his mouth. He, he's... <laughs> He's I'm now completely. <laughs> <laughs> Spilled all the saliva out of his mouth. <laughs> He's now completely dry of moisture. Scooby, on the other hand. Your body's 60% water! <laughs> Shaggy lost 60% of his body. <laughs> Uh, Scooby, on the other hand, was too busy with the inherited narcissism that latently airborne. He combed his hair in an obsessive, dirty manner, like a newly born whore. His pelt started to change color from dog brown to blood red. Obviously, this comb functioned more as a razor. Shaggy took responsibility in getting the first aid kit from the deep freezer and spilled all the contents over Scooby's head in an attempt to subdue him. But this only <laughs> intensified the self-grooming that dog mind equated to suicide. God. Like Scoob, if you don't stop, I'm gonna eat all. I'm gonna eat all your pizza. Scabby decried. Scooby did at least several horizontal spins in order to snap himself out of his delusional fever of self-importance. Right, who was I, Shraggy? Scooby wanted out. <laughs> Shaggy's took a while to move slowly over to Scooby's shoulder, made sure he was staring hard at the floor, and said out loud, "You were." <laughs> You were in hell, old pal. <laughs> you were in hell. Oh, yeah. He twisted his hair into dreadlocks to cheer up the now resuscitated dog, <laughs> who could still only speak in rhymes, in his own head. I don't want to imagine Shaggy with dreadlocks. No, oh. Scooby's dread. Yeah, Scooby's Shaggy hair. twisted Scooby's <laughs> Shaggy, hair into dreadlocks. Shaggy burned all his hair off, remember? To impress the bitches. <laughs> 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 Oh As he was gobbling down on some meat. This dog is just covered in knots. In knots and blood. <laughs> <laughs> They're turning into a fucking adult swim cat. Turning into monsters. 
Let's just eat more of the food, huh, old pal? The dog was not paying attention to any human speech at this time. Too many problems at the facility. Rust lined just about every tangible surface in this place. Even the sinks, even the fridge, even the ceiling fan. This rust was rust for bust, and I lust. There's more to be had from this, Scooby's inner mind pondered. Scooby dashed from the kitchen back to the table, only to find that the refrigerator was squashing all the food they walked, worked ever so hardly to eat. Scooby's first reaction was to attempt fitting his head underneath the several-pound fridge and lap up the quashed food from underneath. That's the- like the most real dog thing he's ever done. <laughs> This story is tearing you to pieces. Yeah. It's cursed. Uh, so wait, how did this fridge get on top of his food? It doesn't matter. Okay. It doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but uh, Scooby knew that most of the food was now unattainable, all gone, all booshed out of restaurant like his ambitions long ago. This dog was going outside, but now look at him, stuck in a bathroom with automatic stalls. The environment was skipping too much to be interesting, or appropriate for the situation. And when all sense was lost, in came Scrappy-Doo, in in shining armor, with a courageous face, with flags and banners streaming side by side, held up by dismembered puppy paws. Truly the glory had arrived, just in time for the dog to lay his head on this companion's shoulder and weep nothing but slobber. Hello, my friend, I have returned from a vacation to death, Scrappy proclaimed pronouncing every word incorrectly. (laughs) The boys got together and had themselves a nice time out, effectively leaving the plaza and walking around outside while aspects of Chipotle still linger. Elias, reread that sentence, but mispronounce every word. (laughs) Okay. Uh. Hello, I'm Frem. I have perm from out vacate to debt, Scrappy proclaimed, pronouncing every word incorrectly. The boys got together and had themselves a nice time out. So Scooby's just in mental hell right now. This is nothing. He's over it. Scrappy's here. He's over it. Scooby's dying. That was not... I think that's his imagination. We can only hope. But to continue. Scooby's fucking losing his mind. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, so they walk out... It says all the boys walk outside, which would be uh, Scrappy, Scooby, and Shaggy. Mm -hmm. But it says, outside, aspects of Chipotle still linger. Burners that made burritos were hung by tree branches. The tiled floor replaced the grass and concrete that was supposed to be lining the outdoors. Ceiling fans were falling continuously from the sky. The cheap ones bought at Lowe's by an overstressed, overweight, overencumbered piece of shit. This is so scary. <laughs> His name was pronounced man a These were troubling accessories to the outdoors. Ones that Shaggy knew full well he may not escape. Did they do something wrong? Did they finally order too much food? These were questions that were immediately forgotten upon gestation because, gestation because look over there, an ice cream parlor scoop. Even the valiant Scrappy couldn't resist, although he very well could have. In the parlor was a mis- was a masked marauder with mumbo jumbo and his mantra of mash. <laughs> what am I describing, you ask? He had a tapestry of human lies draped behind him, while ice cream was spilling in a perpetual fountain with only six colors. I mean flavors. What would you boys like today? I do have ice cream, but I also have fingers. He moved his fingers like an ape, would have multiple penises if he had them. Well, I don't know. I was just fixing for a vanilla scoop. Shaggy bit down on his nails and felt strange pleasure. Well, I can certainly help, but I also can certainly ignore you. The man closed his eyes and waited for, and waited for them to leave. <laughs> The man closed his eyes and waited for them to leave, but this was in vain. Everyone in this town's hungry. After Chipotle reopened, he reopened his eyes, only to find that they in fact didn't leave and stole most of his possessions. And to think I was being enigmatic. But they stolen everything. (laughs) They're just carrying his things. Maybe all his ice cream. He packed up what little he had and started walking down the familiar path he'd walked through many times when he was a toddler, alone with his parents. I remember when these leaves still had juice in them, he said, while biting down on a various few leaves of poisonous pucker plants. 
His lips were drying quicker than his liquor, which was evaporating quicker than a child's snicker. I remembered when these leaves still had juice in them, he restarted, his soggy britches leaving the several trails of intersecting juices. His eyelids dropped, his knuckles whitened, his teeth curved outwards like an untamed nails from an institutionalized man. This is horrifying! What is going on? I'm losing my brain. <laughs> the sun set and rose 700 times before he fell headfirst into the trail, feeling <laughs> this... Like two years. <laughs> Where is this going? Hey, that's not as long as it's been since we last read this one. That is true. Oh, then, uh. I remember when these leaves still had juice in them, the eyes were dry, and the scenery faded into calcium, dirt, and talcum powder. The skeleton was the first thing to go, all crumbly and ridded by the winds, and all fading and dispensing in solitary retardation. Then the muscles spooled out like strings, all sentient like hovering tapeworms. Scooby and Shaggy resisted the urge to walk any further before they realized they left their empty wallet back in Chipotle. They looked at each other, giggled, then screamed, Scooby, this really bites the dust! They walked at about triple speed back to the store to retrieve what they had left there. Only to find that the building had been renovated and Scrappy and Scrappy's on top of it. I have all the superpowers, Scrappy deluded, <laughs> as he put his left paw on his heart and his right paw on his left paw. Right, rip round from rare, Rappy. <laughs> Scooby just covered his eyes. All the superpowers. <laughs> He's literally one for all for one. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, the building had been renovated. Scrappy's standing on top of it, saying he has superpowers. Scooby says, get down. The sun grew awfully bright, and within minutes, the roof, lined in sloppy tar, caught on fire. Scrappy, with no place to go, just ran around the smoldering hot top of that building until the entire thing dropped. Mm -hmm. it, just took a, it just took all the time in the world for the debris to finally hit the ground, but when it did... Scrappy's bones flew out like projectiles and impaled trees, car windows, and a pup named Scooby-Doo. <laughs> Scooby was fearful of his life because the bone took him far, far away, past the park and past the trees, past the garbage between Shaggy's knees, through the highway and out the door, into the field forevermore. Scooby landed nicely in a puddle <laughs> of sand, where his rear end knocked against a piece of contraband. He looked at it, puzzling, wondering why it was there, but a close examination revealed that it was covered in hair. And oh, he knew. He knew how it got there. Sniffed it once, barked. Sniffed it twice, and he took it back to Shaggy, who was tapping his foot, waiting for his friend to come back. Oh <laughs> like, it took a little under an hour, Scoob. I'm pretty pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> Shaggy examined the object Scooby took with him. What the deuce? He took it into his own hands, then pressed his face against it, and sighed. He attempted to scrape the outermost layer off with his front teeth, but this was in vain. So he simply sat on it and thought for a while. This thing's giving me the creep, Scoob. You just put it in your mouth. Time itself seemed to slow down as the two attempted a mid-jump or a secondary jump in midair in their thoughts. Shaggy didn't enjoy the presence of Formula A's chapstick pressed up against his knockers. He demanded a refund, but no one was there. Where did all the money go? Where's the French kiss? There's, these are questions that a madman asks himself once reaching the plateau of putrid heights. And once there, never will return unless asked to. Man, if only I could, like, go to the basement of Chipotle. The screen started spinning a flurry, and in a hurry, they all got there, all disheveled, like they had just gotten out of a goblin's mind. Like, let's never go outside again, Scoob. They walked over to the furnace, which was cooked at a steady which was cooking at a steady 80 degrees. Fahrenheit warming up everything, but just barely. The year-old posters that lined up the walls remained, reminded the characters that Chipotle used to be an eating place with integrity, but had since corroded into a senseless place of despair, especially with a new color scheme. There was nothing to eat down there besides some spiders, French toast, and guacamole. Combine the three and you get a whole lot of guac. Knock, knock. The door knocked for some time. And when Shaggy opened it, it was Fred. I heard you guys stumbled onto a mystery, said Fred, while lifting a weight with his right arm. Like, yeah, man, some mystery. I feel like I've been wondering this place for hours. 
Scooby replaced the hole in his eye with a die, which he could turn to any number between one to six to give answers to people without talking. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get to the end of this paragraph and then we can stop. There's no, a little just, there's a little ways more. Oh, that's okay. Your confession. Okay, hold on. Holy shit. I mean, I, I feel lost. It's the same. This They're guy, in the basement of the Chipotle now. What not I'm... lost in the story, lost in life. <laughs> man just goes in and out of fucking with us. This is clearly a really good writer who's just losing his mind writing this story. Yeah. <laughs> he constantly uses rhymes and shit. It's like some writer just like... <laughs> the wall of death. This is endless. Oh my god. Um, so in response to him doing that with his eye, Fred says... <laughs> <laughs> uh, how are you doing Scooby <laughs> question mark <laughs> Fred inquired Scooby flexed his <laughs> flexed his what get off the floor <laughs> Scooby flexed his Scooby flexed his face and the die shifted to two <laughs> Fred kind of stared at him for a while, then switched the weight to the other arm. <laughs> Have you guys seen Daphne or Melma? <laughs> I'm sleep. I'm sleep. I'm sleep. <laughs> Like, yeah, man, they came by a couple hours ago. They just got back from a shopping spree in the mall right across the street. Fred started doing push-ups on the disgusting concrete floor. <laughs> That's great, guys. Look, we'll have to find them. Fred, comp Fred completed his rep of six push-ups and walked back upstairs. <laughs> his rep. <laughs> That's great, guys. <laughs> and then Fred is just doing exercise <laughs> consistently. Holy shit. <laughs> Ow. The boys had trouble deciding whether they were going to follow him upstairs or if they should just sit on the floor and cry. <laughs> <laughs> Scooby and <laughs> Scooby runs upstairs. That's the most painful sound I've ever heard. <laughs> with the eye die. Scooby ran up the stairs, oh. slid on his paws, attempted to change direction but failed and ran straight into a giant clown's face, also known as the door. Why not? Shaggy almost followed him, but he knew it would just lead to more insanity, so he laid on the floor. Just for a couple seconds, he said to himself, but surely it took much longer. When he finally decided to get up the stairs, they had already accumulated dust on them, and when he got to the very last step, he saw Fred waiting for him with a pup named Scooby-Doo. They decided to take the roller coaster out, 
three seats, just enough for them, and off they got at 16. Off they go at 16 blazing miles per hour, out of Chipotle and into the plaza where the pre- precocious, pimply-faced peers were still perusing the parliament. When the girls met up with Freddy, he knew that he really had to go, so he let one of them wipe their faces off with his ascot, and then he disappeared. I'm off, see you guys. Fred took a leap of faith, but faith wasn't so. And then he broke his bones. <laughs> Which ones? Can I just say he that is t- like my kind of writing right there? And then he broke his bones. <laughs> He's so fit though. He jumped off, he broke his bones. And then it says he continued to slide on the concrete until he was out of sight. <laughs> Velma and Daphne giggled at how much they had bought with so little money. Enough <laughs> magazines to stuff an entire house full with no space left. Shaggy looked at the mass of paper, nudged at Scoob, and then pulled out a gun. This is where I get off. Old pal. He shot at Daphne, and Daphne <laughs> went away. <laughs> Daphne went away? There are two more long paragraphs. <laughs> Please, just let's just wrap it up. This is the episode to wrap it up. We got it. Okay. I'll continue to Every, go into insanity, but let me get more drink. Okay, we don't want to do a continue another continuation episode of the last two paragraphs, because mm-hmm. this story broke us that bad. <laughs> we have to finish what we started so many years ago. Who would have okay. thought this would have taken such an existential, tormenting turn? We went from Fred Flintstone getting knocked on his ass. And to what end? Who's reading this besides us? <laughs> this is a personal torture chamber devised by someone who never knows if you're going to read it. We better read the comments after this. Holy shit. Fourteen Siamese men were said to have taken the remainder of the food, carrying it to the top of a building and stacked it up to a presentable fashion as a prize for climbing it. But Shaggy had had plenty of experience with shimmying up great heights. We're just going to cut past him non-existing Daphne? Oh that just... They're all outside. And then she went away, George. What do you think happened? <laughs> Fred, slid away in a... <laughs> Fred slid away in a pile of skin. Daphne's been killed. <laughs> That just leaves Velma and Scooby and Shaggy. Uh, so 14 Siamese men carried their food to the top of the building. Shaggy knew how to get up there. He's had plenty of experience. As demonstrated in the episode where he and the gang snuck into the museum which housed the Black Knight. Taking his time up the rickety barbelled ladder of latter day barbarism, he got to the top of the dumpy building by the creek and picked up the food using all of his muscles. Watch me slice right in. Scooby applauded him by walking around in a circle like a lion and vomiting. Shaggy used an autistic approach to return to ground level, actually leaping off of the building and dropping all the food. What is that autistic approach? <laughs> he, he leaped off the building, dropping all of his food, and landed square on his knuckles and screamed, Oh, mercy! <laughs> Scooby ran to his aid, but it was too late. That's the first time he's ever felt pain, despite all of the pus and disease he's had. He landed on his muscle. Oh! Oh, mercy! Okay, it's getting, it's getting funny and cracky again, but I'm just waiting for it to take another damn turn. I fell out of a biplane earlier, and I and we were fine! <laughs> Scooby ran to his aid, but it was too late. The ants took all the food away, or rather attempted to, before a heavy rain came and carried all the food to the sewers, where another adventure awaits, but not for Shaggy. He's going to the hospital, stat. (laughs) The ambulance arrived at an acceptable time, not too conveniently fast, but they certainly heard the call. They bandaged the blonde boy's hands very well, so he could not use any of his fingers, and muzzled Scooby. The ambulance drove around 20 miles per hour, Taking their time on the speed bumps and occasionally driving on the sidewalk. What was Scooby intimidating them with his dice eye? (laughs) That's the scariest thing I've ever heard in my life, so maybe. (laughs) 
imagine they turn to the dog and say, Oh, hey, puppy, and it just <laughs> it's silently. And its eye changes from a one to a three. <laughs> so... <laughs> silently contorts. He's like shaking him off as he's trying to muzzle him. <laughs> silently flexes his face. I guess it's his dog. We should take him with us. Uh, Who called the ambulance? Was it Scooby? <laughs> I mean, Velma's maybe there. <laughs> How do you come up with this? Scooby having a time <laughs> So this, the ambulance drove around about 20 miles per hour to take him to the emergency room. If I could ha- So the driver was pretty lazy and tired, thought to himself, if I could have any job in the world, this would be it. Using his pre- prehensile Dalmatian paws to stack dominoes on his dashboard while paying adequate attention to the road. When they finally got to Coolsville Hospital, maybe this is like in reference to the Dalmatian dog that works with the in the Scooby Doo series, yeah. is like driving the car also right now. Anyways, Shaggy bandages. When they finally got to Coolsville Hospital, Shaggy's bandages were soaked in the blood of another man, and Scooby bit his muzzle off. These were <laughs> these were dark times. It says. <laughs> Shaggy. Shaggy like. Scooby like pokes the muzzle into his mouth and then slurps it off his face with a noodle. Shaggy bashed somebody. They have the audacity to say in the middle of this paragraph, these were dark times, period. The blood of someone else on his raft. That's no, those are the blood from when he landed on his knuckles. No, it said <laughs> the blood of someone else. <laughs> I'm they sorry. They go to the hospital and he maliciously beats somebody. <laughs> the hospital doors opened on their own and Shaggy was escorted by the driver to the emergency room where seven civil nurses awaited to perform surgery and civil celibate... to perform surgery and civil celibate Daphne who was shot in the upper breast by a bullet that did its best. Bless you, she said. She blessed as the bullet in question was undressed, revealing gunpowder, a written note, and a key to a chest. A pup named Scooby-Doo, question mark? <laughs> With this key, she closed the hospital on the outside and walked into the... S- and walked into a storm of confusion into the... And walked in a storm of confusion into the nature trail of her understanding. She was lost. Is the nurse Daphne or the nurse? I think this is like Daphne's mental state right oh. now after getting shot in the hospital. <laughs> Uh, the nurses started by doing twirls and kissing the injuries on Shaggy's knuckles one at a time, like a very elaborate dance. They wore lipstick that mimicked the color of common woods used in housing, mahogany, blackwood, and contoured billy-bib blockwood. They had a routine where they pretended to be swimming in a swimming pool as a team, exchanging surgical tools like they were batons and each making the same type of incision (laughs) into Shaggy's swollen pompers. Shaggy gave a look of... (laughs) Shaggy gave a look around in ragged uncertainty. <laughs> Imagine seeing that. That's psycho. <laughs> this look was given to Scoob, who was too busy trying to pantomime having a cone around his neck. <laughs> what? The girls pulled out mysterious joke objects from the incisions they incised. Rubber bands, mallets, and a Grinch's horn. Savant Crease Duck horn. and the daffodils from Shaggy's childhood all stuck all girly like onto the ceiling to dry and shrivel like breath blo- breath blown balloons. The girls made valiant efforts to keep Shaggy occupied while they performed no real surgery and continued their flowery <laughs> unprofessional dances. Shaggy's impatience finally took hold after the lack of anesthetic, and he calmly but rudely asked the girls to hurry it up already. (laughs) I mean, fair enough. (laughs) The lack of anesthetic. (laughs) They're just cutting into his knuckles. He's just annoyingly watching them dance around and make comedy routines. They pull out slapstick items from inside of his body. The girls must have traded their hearing for crack because no response, no sympathy, all dancing. The utensils themselves were long gone by this point. 
Scooby threw them into the trash, and the girls were too nervous to pick up sharp objects they couldn't see, so they just continued dancing. <laughs> oh my god. This is really funny. I like it. It's really hard to do that with a cone on his head. Shaggy's limp legs extended outwards and tripped one of the girls. <laughs> Upon doing this, they all instantly turned into vampires and flew out the window. Shaggy got comfortable on the floor with Scooby and fell asleep to recover from the improper treatment he just received. <laughs> while, z- <laughs> while zonked out on his own snoring snooze, his wounds opened and closed in a hypnothermic Morse code, sending patterns of consistent temperature change onto the floor, freezing and refreezing into a mini ice rink for mites and parasites. A novel evolutionary curse. Mites skating in tandem on the ice, doing twirls and breaking their body parts on purpose using the previously crumbled mite matter as ramps to do their tricks. A multiple twirl, a doggy's dreams, and a horse gallop. It didn't take long to learn the tricks, and Scooby's obsession with equine bodily spasms held his interest on microscopic shit such as this. The mites all passed doggy's peripheral vision, yelling, Hi, Scoob! Or, How's the weather up there? They screamed, giggling before they destroyed themselves for the spirit of the circus. One mite even took the initiative to jump onto Scooby's nose, burrow into the sensitive nervy follicles and transmit deadly computer virus codes which didn't affect the beast not in the slightest a deadly computer virus (laughs) Scooby pawed his face and rid it of the criminal then sighed and sat on the ice rink this was where he started to notice his tongue it had been getting more and more inflamed and slobbery in the past few days leaving giant trails of Komodo spack all through his travels (laughs) (laughs) Komodo the bacterium that rested on the spit would be useful to kill criminals with, but all Scooby cared about was his knives. Knives and forks and spoons, they could have eaten all the food by now if they had these, but finger food is slow eating. Ideal for a family setting or if you're watching your weight. Dogs aren't supposed to watch their weight, but in light of the chubbiness Scooby was gaining, he put his muzzle back on and whined, just to entertain himself. <laughs> just to entertain himself. Shaggy unclenches his fist, took a deep, sour yawn, the vibrations of which shook all the plaque from his teeth, and spit yellow spit like a miniature fountain onto Scooby's head. <laughs> like, if it weren't for those girls, I'd still be outside with these hands of mine and hurting like hell, Scoob. Maybe I should be more careful with how I land my jumps. <laughs> these knuckles aren't very good for absorbing impact. <laughs> he looked at his swollen, gaping punctures inside. Rebandaging them to look like boxing gloves. He punched Scooby <laughs> He punched Scooby Square in the nose, but it only hurt him. Meow <laughs> Shaggy did an overly dramatic flip back onto the ground, potentially hurting his back, but he was fine. Oh my god. <laughs> Scooby snickered. And then he stuck his tongue out and Shaggy backed away. You really should get that thing checked, Scoob. Tongues aren't supposed to be bruised and green. The dog waved his tail and walked out of the hospital unsupervised while Shaggy put his clothes back on and followed in time. (laughs) They noticed the cobblestone pattern that was used to be around the hospital area looked a meticulous work for nothing because these bricks could be removed without any effort. No fastening, no adhesive, just laziness. Like, Scoop, watch this! He chucked a brick at the hospital window and broke it. (laughs) (laughs) Scooby... Took several with his prehensile tail and slammed them into the doors like a sledgehammer. The door snapped inwards and set off an alarm. <laughs> they walked away like they didn't give a shit, but were cautiously looking around for any type of security or policeman, because those would be the type of people that would ruin their fun. <laughs> So they've left. Um, we're on the final paragraph. Oh, holy moly. Let's do this. No, actually, let me use the fucking bathroom. Oh my god, my... <laughs> I thought my legs were weak at how much that sore was doing, but leg day was yesterday. Daphne was putting on makeup next to the mystery machine as Scooby and Shaggy returned from hardly working. It's about time you guys showed up. Where's Velma? 
Like, she's right there. Velma walked over to the crew and they exchanged numbers. It's a good idea we all got... It's a good idea we all got numbers for the new year. Sort of keeps things interesting. Plus, you can surprise your lesser friends with your new numbers. Say I call Fred, and he goes, Uh, who's this? And I respond, It's Velma, don't you remember me? And Fred would go, Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Shaggy really didn't care, because his telephone number was the same number as the local Chipotle's. If I ever need to ring some eats, I know who to call. Myself. (laughs) He called his own number and got a busy tone. Then hung up and sat on the ground and started scratching his head in in severe confusion. Scooby's tummy grumbled. He looked around for the nearest edible thing and found it. A stray cat walked in by its walking by itself in the middle of the highway next to TGI Fridays. The cat also had a collar on, but it was an electric collar that had a very expense, extensive range. So the cat just kept getting shocked and shocked while in the middle of a busy highway. It smelt cooked, but it was still moving, probably in spite of its own demise. Oh my god. The cat's tail was curled in like a fancy onion ring, and its eyes were baked bean red. The meows it mewed were a jumbled mummer of hisses, teeth chattering, and grunts of panthers provoked by pain. Scooby knew that he would have no food for the next few weeks, considering the newest diet his muzzle was forcing him on. (laughs) So he decided to take the assertive action and eat this cat before death got it first. Using only his bottom right paw, he leaped over the head of his friends and sprung onto the highway, where a frogger scenario was about to take place. (laughs) The cat still had some chest logic intact in that cooking cranium and decided to make a night's move to the median where other hungry dogs were waiting. Scooby saw this plan coming from a foot away and reacted a little slowly, but still got to where he needed to be, on the back of another dog, another Great Dane in fact, much older than he. The dog barked 14 times before scratching his head with his foot, sticking said foot in his mouth, biting it, and then howling. Scooby knew this was the perfect time to pounce on the pretty kitty and forced the cat into the grass. Kitty's limbs started spasming and clawing at anything it could reach, but it was fruitless. <laughs> the dog had gotten his way, and Scooby gently placed the cat into his mouth and trotted back, wrecking a car on the way. Shaggy, Velma, and Daphne applauded Scooby as he walked back, then immediately scolded him and swatted the cat out of his mouth, to where the cat ran away, terrified. Bad dog, Velma hissed. Nice going, Scoob, Shaggy encouraged. <laughs> in all my years, Daphne bemoaned. These were ancient men and women stuck in teenage bodies, and they hated every second of it. After a brief discourse about the dangers of sticking dirty animals in your mouth, they decided to break the ice by getting coffee and burritos at Chipotle. Break the ice? They just met up. Taking turns passing the au jus sauce around, dipping their tongues in it like they were sampling ice cream, they reached their table reclined, sighed, and fell asleep. No more pain for no more partying for these guys. They had been through a rough day and deserved a nice slip into something more comfortable. Shaggy passed around some bandanas, which they wrapped around their eyes tightly and started to snore. Even though they were falling even though they were far from falling asleep, the cute waitress came in with a bow tie on her face and wondered just how long ago these travelers clown just how long ago did these traveling clowns fall asleep? You've got Daphne with her caked makeup and frazzled dead hair. You've got Velma with the baboonish nerd lips. You've got Shaggy, for all reasons pacified by the quaking retardation of the ceiling fan. And you've got a damn mutt dirtying up who knows what. She just looks up the ceiling fan like a fidget spinner. She looked at all of them. With... She looked at all this with an accepting glare. Put her bow on the dog's dainty, dirty dome and committed suicide. When she was done, she got the coffee out of her pocket and poured it on the table. To which the humans lapped it up think like she dogs. Was done shit when she was done. <laughs> to which the humans she said she got the coffee out of her pocket and poured it on the table. To which the humans lapped it up like dogs and Scooby bathed in it like a pig. An airplane cried above, shredding clouds with its engine and splitting out condensation in torrential rain, pouring right above Chipotle and making all the food soggy. No more dry burritos in this dump, like soggy salads and roast beef colder than necessary. Then the floor opened up and sloped completely vertically, and all the tables and customers slid down to a bottomless pit. The coffee was strong, and Shaggy and Scooby and Daphne didn't even know what they were falling. 
but Velma had a clear idea of what was going on. The floors were not supported by anything when the establishment was first built, and because of this, was always at risk of running into a situation like this. <laughs> Whether they'd land soft or hard was all in the hands of the creator, and they knew that the creator would go easy on them. A hard checkerboard floor. It killed everyone but the cartoon characters. For shame. The floor spanned beyond what could be registered as an animated brain. No dimensions to speak of. No boundary or distance could be achieved. From then on, balls of pox arose from the unspeakable lines of the voids and cracked circles around the debris from the world above, analyzing it for future consumption. In a similar manner to how a spider inca incapacitates its prey, the balls of pox sent string after string of sticky floss, covered in a deep shiny black, around the aching bodies of the mystery team, creating a sort of net to simulate a sort of net to situate them nice and tuckered onto the impossibly cold floor. They didn't want to struggle because it was as soft as a doe's kind words, the words that deer speak to babies before screaming obscenities at them. Shaggy tried drinking from his coffee cup, but it all spilled in the fall down. Zoinks! The others just seemed mesmerized as the balls of pox purposely, in fall purposely emulated a traffic signal by blinking red, yellow, and green, and above them, disembodied traffic, all bad drivers, drove in midair and crashed into things that weren't there. Showering the floor with, inju with injuries, metal and glass and le leather fragments, which were swept up by anthropomorphic clouds. Eventually, a colossal scissor fell with velocity into the ground, stabbing it and causing rhythms of breathing insatiably. Travel through the floor, massaging the dog. re he 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 It was pretty therapeutic, but it caused Velma to lose her glasses. My glasses! I can't see without my glasses! Good thing, too, because of the point, a terribly... Because at this point, a terribly steep valley was forming in the floor. At the center of the valley, objects were propelled through it at the speeds of light into a brick wall, shattering it into fundamental elements, and this valley was creeping towards the gang. But they weren't paying attention. The balls of pox were playing charades, and it was a very aggravating game, seeing as how they couldn't really guess anything from these featureless stupid spheres. A doctor? Daphne guesses. No. Try again. A cockroach? No. Try again. I got, 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 got a ghost? The ball traveled several miles vertically and immediately came back down. No, try again. <laughs> Scooby looked around for clues, and lo and behold, he saw it. That rip in the ground was heading straight their way. Rut row, Scooby thought, but he couldn't speak because of the muzzle. Dumb dog. He covered his paws and awaited something spooky to happen. The others were too invested in beating the game of charades. Is it a noun? Yeah. Speak <laughs> <laughs> in charades. Like, can you cook with it? Might be useful for pizza, Shaggy half-heartedly joked. The balls of pox spun around in what appeared to be amusement, and then returned to their judicial positions. No, I suggest you try again. This was getting ridiculous, and Shaggy did have a gun on him. I knew the answer all along! Shaggy jumped out of the netting and slowly fell towards the balls with his gun out, <laughs> pulling the trigger and shooting each of them. And this scared the balls away, each one shooting off in a different direction. Shaggy fell for four hours until he finally reached the trampoline he was meaning to buy a while ago, but spent too much time of his money on putting a microwave into the mystery machine that was powered by solving mysteries. <laughs> <laughs> So after a scary day's work, he would roast the hot dog inside of it based on the merit of their hard work, and it was always cooked evenly, and it was always healthy. Scooby would usually get to it before Shaggy could take a bite, and when he did, all he tasted was bun, to which he would look at Scooby, and Scooby would look at Scrappy, and Scrappy would look at himself in the mirror and wonder why he ate a hot dog. Scrappy died, by the way. I don't know if you saw it, but while Scooby was walking back with the cat in his muzzled mouth, Scrappy realized that Scooby forgot his Scooby snacks and ran to tell him, but a car named came careening across the median, <laughs> killing several real-life dogs and a pup named Scrappy-Doo, who was too distracted looking at it to realize the pothole that it, he had walked into and bumped his cockix and killed him instantly. <laughs> Meanwhile, airborne Scooby snacks scattered across the road. Most ran over, a few still there waiting to be eaten. Yeah. Too invested in the stickiness of the net sprayed on them by the three balls, the gang felt that it would be better to lay here and experience their return Bump to the periodic table. <laughs> well, he tripped on a pothole and fell on his cockpits and then got hit. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, the gang felt that it would be better to pit, lay here and experience their return to the periodic table than to continue solving mysteries, but just as they had readied themselves to accept the terminal fate, 
A clothed hand appeared and picked them up from a retard's folly. It was Fred. The end. Thank you guys so much for joining us for our anniversary special. Thank you. Yay. <laughs> we'll see you next time. See you next Good night. Good night. Good night. Wait, what would you rate the entire 50 episodes? Perfect. Ouch. It's been a good year. Three years. Two years. This is the third one here. Okay, let me read the first comment on that story. <laughs> the show's over! Wait, I just want to read the comment. I'm sure it'll be good. Uh, there's three comments. The first one was, What the fuck was this? None of this made sense. The second one was, What the fuck does this guy do for a living? What the fuck? And the third one just says, Hot. Yay, buddy! Night. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining us for our anniversary special. We'll be back with another great show. Just you wait and see. It's going to be so exciting. You can't wait. I can't wait either. I'm going to go to bed.